Welcome back to another Angry Coach Marathon, where, where I do my best to help people improve. Unless they're unwilling to help themselves. But for this, we, we finally have some basis for that. I have enforced the requirement of an sc2replaystats.com account. sc2replaystats.com, if you haven't seen all of the times I've talked about it over and over and over and over again, it's like, well, I don't know how to use the internet, Winter. Well, smash that like button and continue to be ignorant. But, uh, SC2 replays, to it, a lot of people, the reason they don't play StarCraft is not because they don't want to or because uh, they're not interested, is because they don't have the time uh, or at least the time to stress themselves out by playing StarCraft. So SC2 replaystats.com, we have a replay up here that we're going to be starting with is probably the best resource for making your time as efficient as possible. I know a lot of people, I've watched people play things like Factorio uh, or any like World of Warcraft. It's like, what are the best, most optimum meta things to ever do? Well, it's not like that, but SC2 Replay Stats gives you an overview, a breakdown, and it, it usually what I see before I even go into a replay, I look for a few basic things like, is the game ridiculously long or short? Is there an obvious reason for that? Are there points where one player is way ahead and then they run up a ramp in the siege tanks? Like, you get a basic idea of, are they going to make one of the most classical mistakes? One of the least or, or less obvious ones like getting supply blocked or unspent resources. So, Jimmy! Jimmy! Bring me back! Okay. We've been having issues. Uh, Logitech, their drivers, have gotten a DUI for being drunk at the wheel, but they put them right back on the road. Um, I don't know why they make webcams still. Anyways. So, our first replay, we're actually looking at the Protoss. I see nothing. There's no major supply blocks here. There's no huge engagements. Uh, nothing incredibly, like... I'll just break down some of the basic stats to start because everybody loves stats, right? And uh, they also love stats on SC2 replay stats. Um, average unspent is reasonable. We're looking diamondish. Spending quotient, which is a very rough, it's not as accurate anymore, but it's a very rough uh, indicator of how well you spend your resources. Like, are you queuing up a bunch of units? That doesn't help your spending quotient. But are you building probes? Without queuing up a bunch of probes, are you getting, uh, are, are you spending your money on things that are, are a waste of money or inefficient or are they efficient? Uh, don't, don't worry too much about that, but you get general ideas if there's anything that sticks out. I don't see any here, thing here. So we get into the game and we're going to take a look. Diamond Proton. So... Besides building a second pylon, we've all heard about building a second pylon, okay? Uh, and, and I will, after this first replay, I just want to get into it, but we'll be talking about the whole account wide. Not just one replay, but for your whole account. Like, if you use the SC2 replay stats auto uploader, if you know what a file directory is, and you haven't yet deleted your system 32, then you can simply direct uh, all your new replay files to be uploaded to SC2 Replay Stats. All you have to do, like two buttons, which is two more buttons than most players use for anything but cannon rushing. But then you can upload every replay automatically without worrying about which one do I need to upload. They have the space, okay? Replays are like the size of a floppy disk. Or less. All right. So the second pylon is on time. It's not like, what is that pylon doing? What do we see on the other side? The second pylon is on time. I've talked a lot about second pylons, but we do, of course, just as important is your pylon efficiency and necessary infrastructure safety rating. And you want to have, well, the, the best rating you can get. So... This second pylon back here, let me just give you a layout for your standard pylons. With these marathons, and if you made it this far, if you made it this far into the video, if you're on the stream, let's, let, for some reason people watch Twitch for 8 hours, but they won't watch a YouTube video for 3 minutes, or click on it if it's over an hour long, but guess what, some of you will. So if you made it this far, you're going to continue watching. But what I like to do with these 
is be more general. Instead of this specific player, how do you improve? We're going to do that. But also, how do all of you noobs at home who spend more time watching things than playing improve? So, the basic pylon placements up against Protoss. Uh, Terran, rather. For Protoss, obviously. This is fine, over here. Now, a lot of players will wall off the Reaper. There, Almost every map has a Reaper jump location where it's not just at the front of your base, but it's at the side. Acropolis is a good map, and it's important to figure these things out at the beginning of the season. It's a good map. You can wall this off with a single pylon. One pylon right there. No Reaper can get in. They can't go up the little fancy alley cafe way. Literally cafe. And, and it's not vulnerable really at all. It's literally specifically for the Reaper. Usually there's a little indicator. So, on this map, I would recommend first or second pylon. A lot of players will just first pylon and then put a gate next to it. But uh, we'll be to block the Reaper. The second pylon, the reason I was like, oh, second pylon, at least it was on time. But the second pylon is also very important because in this case, it's not a proxy. There's a command center. There was one gas. We got a full scout, a good scout without getting distracted. So you got a couple options from this point. Do you build one at the front? You want to be within super pylon range uh, of the Nexus, which is a pylon that is close to a ne within power range of a Nexus or a warp gate. Not a gateway, but a warp gate. Warps in three times as fast. If you're wondering why sometimes your stalkers take way too long, and then you should maybe wonder why you're building stalkers in the first place. But that is important to note. So the point is that this pylon, while it's not in a terrible spot, it doesn't do anything for you. What if he goes for Hellions? What if he goes for a Cyclone push or a Tank push or something early? Having this pylon here, maybe you can build a shield battery later on, but not usually as good as potentially walling out a Reaper, because Reapers, there are three things in life that are, are almost certain, which are death, taxes, and uh, scouting Reapers, or Hellion run by. So fine pylon doesn't seem like a big deal second pylon when and when where and how it is very important and uh i wanted to spend some time on that all right it's, it's we obviously know the reaper is a threat so why not deal with it the reaper just a pylon would have solved this problem this problem. Okay. Your probes would not be dying if the pylon had been in a better spot. Like, in that location. Where the Reaper keeps, uh, getting, uh, his uh, espresso from the barista and then coming in and killing all your probes. And now Warp Gate's gonna finish. You're gonna go blank for one gate? You're gonna have four. Not only is that not going to be nearly enough stalkers to do anything but two it baits you into going stalkers in the first place so not only are you not going to have any of them but you have some of the least uh effective you know they're they're okay blink is okay but blink for the sake of blink is a waste of money Everybody has their personal preference of announcer packs. Some of them are wrong. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong. And now we see here, like, that worked out. That was nice of him. Honestly, probably shouldn't have hit. Fine. I'm more worried about where we go from here. I like her. Liking is for this video and for your favorite foods. Not for what announcer pack you're using. Okay, maybe. But, I mean, give it, give it a month or two and maybe you'll have more options. We'll see. But, I, just for now, reflect. I'm here in the shadows. You're out of just think about what you truly want in life. And think about all the choices you've made. Here 
So the Blink Stalkers, usually the reason you go for them is to be able to get another base. Thank you, Orange is here. Uh, in a timely manner. Otherwise, going for Blink gives you map control because you've got these very mobile units that if they move out too early, will kind of run them over. But overall, no damage taken, taking the third. Now, I always... How many times have two medevacs come in and just killed the forges? How many times? What percentage of times? Not necessarily, because we don't play many games. But if, if there's a drop, if he comes in with two medevacs, the forges are dead. Thus, like, I think it's good to get in the habit of just building them, like, back here. Or even at the front. Because you want to build your for Your forges are a key part of the strat. So, you want to build them where, if you lose your forges, you're probably losing the game anyways. It's a small thing, a but a lot of small things add up. That mineral field's gone. It's like... It's like how Wings of Liberty, in so many games, people lost because, like, so many certain players lost games because they're doing fine, they're doing fine, and then three separate times a Warp Prism comes in and kills a Greater Spire that's on the very corner of the main with also the Infestation Pit, the Roach Warren, and the Hive. Like, they're, they're halfway across the map. And then eight zealots come in and kill all their tech, and then they rebuild it in the exact same spot. And I never understood why they do it to this day. But mostly people have gotten better about it. It's most obvious for Zerg who only has one of each tech building. But that even in like 2012, that would I, I would always ask like, but why in the like back edge of your main base? Why is that the spot for a greater spire? I don't. The answer was, so that way Protoss had a chance to win against Infestor Broodlord, obviously. So, maybe that chance will come again. Was that a scouting immortal? A classic tactic. Have I mentioned Archon in the past? Do we have Archon? Wait, is Storm done? There's no Storm. There's no storm. This was a nice move. So, by the time, like, 50... 55 drones at max. We're looking at 8 gates. Especially if you're not going for super splash. And by super splash, I mean, uh... Uh, straight to storm or like colossi if you're relying on straight gateway units with maybe a little bit of flavor for example archons then eight gates at 50 to 55 probes i like to tie i like to have anchors because a lot of people are like at what timing should i take a third or what what uh how many gates should i have you want to have multiple options. I think the most reliable because it ties it to your economy you can just hover over that top right corner Look at the supply and see how many probes you got. But uh, especially in PvT, 50 probes equals 6 to 8 gates. And honestly, let's, let's, be, let's be honest with ourselves. Are you spending your money constantly? Let's say 8 gates in pretty much every scenario. Even if you don't quite have the money now, the 8 gates are going to pay off when you forget about them for 30 seconds. So. That field's been mined out. So that way, like, the, the benefit of that, the benefit of, like, 50, 50, 50 probes. I don't know what my probe was doing. There's always a probe hiding in the corner. I hate that. 50 probes into eight gates. So that way, if you think about gateways, boom. You think about probes. You think about probes, boom, you think about gateways. I know that's not the best handwriting, but... So you have twice the 
give or take twice the opportunity to actually think about useful things and not forget them. Okay. That's a lot of bio. That's a lot of bio. The best way, the best way to make an attack more successful, besides YOLOing into bio, War Prism in the main. How many games have you seen Maru lose because he's microing like a tearing god, and then a War Prism comes into the main with four to ten zealots, and everything is ruined. Uh, if the war prison goes in the so there's two options. One, they draw their army back and deal with it. Two, they're distracted. Or three, you do a bunch of economic damage. Maybe some of everything. But this, like, if they, this is just, why are you putting it all on the line here? They have marines, marauders, and medevacs. You have units that can't just be pumped out two at a time. The only risk you run is if your army gets beat down so hard you don't have the opportunity to rebuild it. So we see here that risk coming to pass. Why, the warp prism and things like a warp and in the main allow you to put yourself in a scenario where you're no longer as likely to be risking your important units that take forever to build, like immortals. And also, let's think about that 2-2 timing here. I, I do like how you manage, like this was a perfect timing uh, for the Terran because you attacked about 12 seconds. You managed to lose every last one of your units about three seconds before your upgrades finished, uh, which is um, very good for him. That was the best he could possibly ask for. As you see there, plus two armor is done. And now plus two weapons are done. And now there's no armor. <laughs> As a general rule, if your upgrades are finishing in the next 30 seconds. Speaking of upgrades finishing. If your upgrades are finishing in the next 30 seconds, you better be damn sure you're going to win this fight. Because there's a very there's a much better chance of winning it in 30 seconds. 30 Oh my god. Words are overrated. Upgrades are a big deal. I would say, like, a plus two upgrade is worth another 15 to 20 supply in that fight, generally. Both upgrades, like the 2-2 with the armor, especially for charge lots, is worth another 30 supply total. Not, not like, 50 total. But that's essentially like having a 30 supply larger army than you would have with 1-1. One, one. There go the forge. And now we're running around in circles because we have no units because we threw them all away for no reason and Archon is stuck yep like this is very like there was no reason there was no reason to attack it the reason to attack it shouldn't be well. I, it felt like a good time. Just because he didn't see you coming doesn't mean it's a good attack. If the attack had had 2 2 with it, I still would have said it was a bad idea. But, one, storm. This is not the point at which you should be getting storm. Two, don't attack in before your upgrades finish. Like, literally seconds before, not like halfway done. It was like, the attack began with 30 seconds, and all your units died with 5 seconds. Three, you have a warp prism. Let's use a warp prism. Four, the fact that we're talking about this stage of the game past 150 supply is pretty good. So, on the bright side, we're talking about this stage of the game, which, which is a good sign. On the downside, these are not easy fixes because these are things that are going to be different every game. Uh, it's not like, well, fix your build and you'll win more games because this is not that scenario. Uh, it's harder to fix. 
because it's more complicated because it's a higher level thing so overall the money was spent pretty well uh the build was okay uh pylon placement and uh gateway timings and third base timings and all that lack of storm but what is this diamond diamond three or two it's a little hard to tell and also i think you are unranked i don't know uh, we'll just say mid we'll say diamond dish and for that okay since we're doing a whole deal we'll talk about the hope score for me is how likely i think that you are uh to rank up and up until diamond for for bronze to plat it is to get to the next league up to diamond for diamond it is the next tier um because diamond tiers are both numerous and also wide um that was that was a pun but the amount of mmr gap between diamond three and diamond two is like almost the entirety of the platinum league. that's why that's part of why so with that and then an average amount of games five per league five for bronze or any for bronze uh <laughs> 10 for silver 15 for gold 20 for platinum and 25 for diamond per week a lot of people don't play 25 games a week and to that i say well you're not going to improve as fast because that's just how it is um and that's average but based on my limited it's a b because there are issues that need fixing but the basics are there so some games you're just going to win because they attack and fail because you built a lot of units but if you attack and fail for no reason that's when you're going to lose that means I think it's pretty likely if you play 25 games a week, you got to scale it down if you play less. If you play more than that, you might want to look at, especially if you get a low score, and that score, you can find the rubric uh, for that, like what's an A, B, C, or D, whatever. You can find that in my head um, and nowhere else pretty much because I make it up on the spot. So, overall, decent, but glaring decision making issues and now let's really let's get a little let's dig a little deeper okay we have our next uh i was gonna say challenger but challenged is probably more accurate um we have last lombax last lombax a gold so this season we're looking using the automatic uploader on sc2 god damn it jimmy this is a real issue today uh, <laughs> season MMR average max so you've been hovering around here uh, a lot you download in order once again to download uh, just download application you can direct it to your replay folder on Starcraft 2 you might be like well how do I find that professional tip right click show in folder on any of your replays and you're going to find the replays tab where if you look up it says replace okay you might recognize it because me like many of your sentences it starts with re and now you go to that folder and you connect it to sc2 replay stats it sounds complicated it's not complicated so what do we see here pvp pvt not that many games but a decent chunk over 40 games this season so i'm not seeing anything huge here can we can we get a training center on this guy no i can't do it on other people's accounts unfortunately but you can use the training center on your own that'll give you some more statistics let's look at some replays so wait let me go back no obvious glaring issues pvz pvz a lot of players around that gold level, it looks like gold and plat, struggle. Uh, well, part of it might be at the metal league level. It might just be the inability to put the buildings in the right spot. Um, a lot of players will, if they ever do look up a guide or any like or a pro game or something like that, they will spend 20 seconds looking at it. Like I got the idea, 
and then go into the game and the idea falls apart more than the rest of their game plan. Uh, like, from the first pylon, it becomes a disaster. But we're going to find out. I'm going to pick the game. This is not handpicked by the player trying to come up with their own issues, which is usually misleading at the very best. But we got a... We got a uh, let's, let's sort by Protoss versus Zerk. How convenient. Uh, looks like we lost a match to Oink. That's always rough. Uh, <laughs> and... It. Been going a little better lately. Is this a longer game? Let's take a look at this. Uh, a strong gold zerg. Necromanzis. Let's give it a shot. A uh, world of sleepers, which is a little bit of a more confusing map. Not confusing, but a little bit between the uh, mineral wall tour the third. I have a tendency to build my forges by my mineral line. Is this bad? As long as they're not blocking your mining, that's fine. The more you play, the easier it is to get in. Well, the easier it is to get into good habits and bad habits. Uh, but I think overall, good habits are well. They're harder to build, right? Like bad habits happen quickly. Based well, that's kind of why they exist in general. Uh, good habits take time. And the more you play, the better. But if you're building, like, if you're building your forges, like, here or back here, whatever. But if you're building them, like, in your mineral line, like, now the Zerglings can't get to me. Well, technically correct. Not a good idea. Okay. And you're in the winter, oh, winter really plan, which is uh, a little different. Okay, the wall looks pretty good. So here's your basics. I'm going to zoom in. Well, actually, zooming in will make it more confusing. On almost every map, I think it might be every map in the pool. Pylon. It doesn't feel like this is the case, but you can do gate. Gate. Well, in this order, gate, cyber core, and a gate. And that'll have a, a slot for, well, it'll be more like this. There'll be enough space. For an adept or a zealot, the only units that can't get through are larger ones like like archons or your mother. So, in in that case, you just build them on the. Honestly, you're probably you shouldn't be building archons when you don't have a way to get them out of your base on two bases. Take a third. It's not that scary, but that's the basics on on most maps. It, it might be a different angle or something. It might not look like it, but that'll get you. And if you don't you don't see that or it didn't it somehow went wrong well that's because okay that's because you put it in the wrong spot probably oh all right so we made it all the way up to the gateway in the right spot and now we're off the rails because you forgot the assimilator now we remember the ideas are there you sent the probe down i mean eventually we gotta expand so There you go. All right. Slap the next. Don't panic. He has a drone, yes. I appreciate the lack of, well, you got the cyber cord. That's what matters. I don't know what, okay, so you got the cyber core, and then you forgot that you were scouting your opponent. If Now, I know this is gold, we're going to take that into account. Just the fact the wall in looks like some, like, like this is the way you're, you're, you're good so far. We're just going to ignore the fact that if you actually noticed what your probe was scouting, even if you don't have that minimap DLC that allows you to see, well, the minimap, his pool wasn't even done, which means if his pool wasn't done, now stick with me, stick with me. If the pool is not done, he cannot yet have... Zerglings, okay. So you do not need a wall yet. If his pool is done, he can make Zerglings. If it's not done, no Zerglings. But better safe than sorry. Oh, don't lose. Okay, that that is a 
That is a predator drone right there. Dude, okay, don't. Do, don't. Don't let a drone kill all your probes. Stop this nice coach shit. Being mean for the sake of being mean or angry for the sake of being angry has no purpose. Otherwise, like, if I didn't distinguish between when players seemed to be understanding what they should be doing and they didn't, and I was just angry for the sake of being... That's the difference between watching Gordon Ramsay and the Kardashians. Okay, this ain't just vapid bullshit, unlike most of your comments. But instead, we're trying to fucking learn something. educational experience I hope you, you feel enlightened by the end of it and while that second pile okay well but the, the, like I mentioned just the simple threat oh well Straight line. Straight line. So, you built a stalker first. A stalker is... God damn. Jimmy, what in... I don't actually know. I'm gonna have to... Take my webcam out by the woodshed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have a woodshed. What is this, 1964? Anyways. So, a stalker is for players who don't know what else to build. And you built a stalker because you don't know what else to build. Don't lie to me. And this is not the place to put the gate. You can put the gate, it might not seem like it, but you can put it in a straight line up against this and you will still have enough space to get the stalker out. But unfortunately, we were doing so well and then it, it your silver leak, I know we're not far out of the silver leak, it showed through. And now the wall is super vulnerable to zerglings. You have a stalker for unknown reasons. Um, you could build another unit and if that's a stalker well then oh no oh no well at least it was a good start it looks like we got uh, two minutes into the build order guide and then we just skipped to the end with a bunch of immortal archons and a lot of it just looks like uh, the puberty uh the the puberty years not the years well i guess years of the build which are pretty much between about 25 and 40 supply we just ignore what happens there, and we skip to uh, what they're doing now. But here, it's uh, there. There will be games that are lost because this Zerg, this Zerg player has never done anything but make 20 goddamn Zerglings and just run across the map and pray your wall is a shit show. And if he had made 20 Zerglings and run across the map, I think it is very likely he would have just won the game. There were ways that you could have prevented that with exactly the same stuff or even less you have right now, but you didn't. These are things you can do essentially every game better, and that's why it's important. It's not like this is terrible, but it could be better, and it's easy to fix. Research complete. Now we're getting zealots. I mean, like I said, we just skip through several minutes and then boom 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 immortal archon charge lot ta-da 
Okay, so... The, put a pong on somewhere in your main. Like, somewhere. Just in case, like, you never know. You might, like, right here or something. Oh, well, well... Okay, I mean, like, like I mentioned, it you're getting there. We're, 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 now here's, here's the difference. Here, these next few moments will tell me what the true hope is. The rest of the game doesn't matter very much. Not as much as the next few moments. Besides the build order, like, I, Diamond Leaguers will make that same, whatever this mess is. Like, you'll get to Diamond with that. Even though it's not great, it's fine. Uh, but, you have extra gas. You got double upgrades, which whatever. If you take a third base and get a Templar Archives from this point, I will know that your heart is true and that your brain is just slow. But... If it takes losing all your units on some wasted attack before you realize you can take a third or get Templar, well, it's going to be a whole lot harder. So we will see. This is, this is the last moment. You don't remember if you did? This is why we're going through the full accounts. I'm picking games, not randomly, but I'm picking games that these players did not pick out. This is just a ladder match. That happened. And, well, we know Mr. Lombax lost, but we do not know how, and it doesn't happen soon. And he doesn't remember how, so we don't get the bias of people sending in replays thinking they know their own mistakes. That's the beauty of this. But the problem here is, there's no critical thing. If if you want to have like a solid straight up strategy you can just do, there are two base all-ins. Yes, that's kind of a thing. I would recommend learning how to build more shit than your opponent because more shit counters less shit. And that usually involves getting a third base and maxing out. What you're doing now is you've waited this long to put together a two base push He's had, now, it's, let's, let's dispel with the idea that you were caring what he was doing. All right. You, you did not endeavor in any way to scout for what he had before moving out. It was only after you showed up on his lawn full of this gooey purple creep that you're like, huh, looks like he's got some units. If only you had literally an invisible eye in the sky for the entire time that you could have scouted with from when you moved out from well before it until now. But unfortunately, it is this moment. We, we That first moment, okay. Well, that's why we're uh, in high bronze, low plat. But this is that moment of self-reflection where you can be like, huh, maybe, just maybe, I won't attack. Just may or maybe I won't just go barreling up there after four moments of pretending to contemplate it. Let us see. This is not the correct reaction. Building random ass pylons at the front of your base. This isn't Sim City, and you're trying to raise your aesthetic score. But at least you didn't just YOLO in. I'll give you that. Okay, Archons. Have I talked to Archons? You're not even supply bot. I don't even know what the pylons are for. You're like, well, I got money. How do I spend it? If only, instead of building four extra gates, well, actually, I don't mind the gates, but instead of building, se okay, let's do the math. Let's do the math. All right. So a lot of you know my inspiration. Um, my inspiration. I want to show you how I like to do math. And I assume a lot of you learned from this same, uh, same, same teacher. Uh, 
and his math skills. So this th that would explain a, a whole lot, assuming you guys are on... I don't know, uh, it's not from me, but a lot of people are inspired by this man. So let's, uh, you know they let's, let's go ahead and, and show you a quick math lesson. Um, this one, very educational. Say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at small Joe, and you can Pay see attention. that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak. And I'm not Jimmy, normal. Jimmy, Jimmy, take so it back. You got a 50-50 chance that? of winning. 50-50. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beating me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me, and he's not even going to try. So, small Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance, and you got an 8 and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning if we used to go one-on-one -on -one, and then add 66 and two-thirds percent, I got 141 and two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. I assume, I mean, that's where we all learned how to do basic math. Uh, because the numbers oftentimes here in these games also spell disaster after you sacrifice all your units. And right now I give it a 141 and two-thirds percent chance of not understanding how much a third base costs. Because, because you are spending... A thousand minerals on things in your base and zero on more bases outside of it. Mineral field empty. But there's the Templar archive. Sacrifice those workers to free up supplies. Even day non safe. Oh, you are now in my service. A mineral patch just went. Like, you know what you're supposed you can see, the beauty of this is you can see the Silver Leaguer pull, like, you can see the two sides. You know what you're supposed to do, but during the game, okay, let, let me, let's just, let's just enjoy what happened there. You built, you just built Archons, but you did build Archons. And now, what happens in a fight? Ta-da! Well, okay, so as a general rule, you don't want to sit on his lawn for long enough for him to put everything back together. You're sitting here, he can see you. The creep tumors give vision. The creep itself doesn't. Creep tumors are what gives vision. This is his vision, which is pretty good creep spread by him, by the way. Um, he, You're just sitting there, and he's like, oh, shit. And he's like, alarm bells going off and everything. And you're just like... Can I, get, can I get four more zealots? We're under attack. Just go kill them. If you had just straight up attacked right off, right off the bat, then okay. Unfortunately, your zealots were very interested in that extractor. You killed the base. It wasn't the end of the world. As long as you focus on the right units. Two immortals at a time. The fact... Okay. Now everybody knows... For some players, they assume that anything more than 1-1 one -one upgrades were, were from the ancient scriptures and do not apply today. But thankfully, both players here seem to understand you can actually just get 2-2 two -two and it's really not that difficult. Uh, Okay, like, the the general, like, that's too many zealots. That is too many, here, five, five, five. If you need to know what army to build, five, five immortals, five archons, 
five charge slots. Everything else is uh, like counter attacks or whatever. You got it. You're using hotkeys. All right. So let the army hotkeys isn't gonna screw everything up. You got enough gas for like five more archons. Mineral field empty. Sacrifice those workers to free punish the enemy attacking your base. I actually think you might be able to go storm and not screw up everything. It seems like, well, here's what'll happen. Like by the fourth or fifth time he fights a mortal archon, he might actually have the time to go into an angry coach zerg video and find out what broodlords are, which is what you're it seems attacked. happened here. Don't forget to macro. You're li he can see you this whole time. Every time you're Jimmy, I, this is a real issue. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to take it by the. I'm gonna have to buy a woodshed. The whole process. Mineral field completed. Your forces are under attack. You're under attack. Lift Mineral off. field oh, depleted. Elsewhere. I don't mean to interrupt, but you're under attack. Resping got mineral field empty. You know why they call them immortals? <laughs> Sacrifice those workers to free up supply. You're being attacked. Don't forget to macro. A mineral patch just went kaput. Unfortunately, this seems to be a pretty legit game. Besides, well, well, if you hadn't just yoloed in several times, the archons were late. The third base was late. The army composition was mediocre. The decision made like mineral field depleted. There's no You're one. Here's the Let's here's the tough part. Them. You know what? Here, I can solve it. Third base by six minutes. You might seem greedy. Most players take it by five. Eh, not most, but third base by six minutes. I don't care if you feel safe or not. You said to probe. I don't care if there are 20 Zerglings and 30 Banelings out there. I don't need to third interrupt. base by six minutes. Archons by seven. At least for 10 games. What? Why do you hate your probes? I'm so squared so much when I fight Zerg. Well, maybe cut some corners. I did Oh, scared. Ah. The beauty of this is that the Immortals are still living through most of these fights. Those are not your zealots, my friend. A minor setback. He was pretty good. That was a way better, honestly. I think that Zerg player was more like Diamond. He had good creep spread, a much better economy. That was not a gold level Zerg. And here's the thing: you're not a gold level Protoss if you played any games. Let's take a look. We're gonna we're gonna stalk you some more. Back to the stalking. These guys gave consent one way or another. Yeah, when you play two games, four games, one game, one game, that's not enough. In in the land like. For gold, I say 15 games a week. It's in the last 15, let's see, 5, 10. In three weeks, you've played 15 games. What I feel like is if you played 10 games, maybe the first or second PvZ, you're panicking and you're building random stuff everywhere and all that. But by the third one, you're kind of like, oh yeah, Archon's quicker in third base. You can't just like jump back into it. you got to catch up to where you were which is easier than learning new things, and then you can build on it. But uh, at all points, everybody's getting better. You're not practicing, so you have to catch up. You're not. It, this isn't. This isn't Hearthstone, where it's like, well, what's the new top deck? Let's get that. Let's pay four hundred and twenty dollars and get that deck. Like, doesn't work like that. That's just the Zerg game, so it's just approximately one third of your games. Oh wait, wait, wait. You got a good point. I did sort. Wait, let's see. Okay. Closer. Closer. You're closer to 15. 5, 6, 7. Not solid on it, but closer. 
And actually seeing that gives me more confidence. I'll give you that. It's it's a B plus. Cause you, you There's still some glaring issues and the, the Silver Leaguer poking through, but if you can just keep that Silver Leaguer Do that. There you go. It wasn't terrible. Now we have Apex. The stuff of legends. A diamond Terran. A diamond Terran. I want to I want to just test one thing. All right. I want to just test one thing real quick before we get into the statistics. Yeah, we're we're switching gears. Diamond Terran. Uh, you started at 3,100 this season. It looks like you moved up to 34-something. Not bad. Um, I just want just, to... Just a quick Terran test. You're playing a lot of games. Good for you. That's good. Uh, let's take... I'm a Protoss. Wait, what? Am I being dumb? Wait, what? The, your last replay was Terran. I was basing it all on that. Terran, 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 Terran. Wait, what? Who are, who am I? Who is Apex then? Who is this? Terran, 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 Terran. Uh... <laughs> Random players. Oh, I see. Protoss. You've played more games as Terran than you've played as Protoss. I'm just saying. So, but we will look at Protoss then. Looks like we've got another... I guess we're doing all... Uh, Protoss is his spirit animal. You would think... If he's playing random and Protoss in any, like, even number, Protoss would have significantly more games. But that is not even remotely the case. But, okay. All right. We just did Protoss versus Zerg, and while it was very different, uh, I'm going to Protoss versus Protoss. Because a lot of players... Protoss versus Protoss is... Even though at the... This is one of the matchups that's a mess at the pro level. Thank you, Has. But, uh, when you get you below that pro level, it's actually not so big. Um, it, you can definitely just have a standard straight-up build. You don't have to do the YOLO, oh, here's a Robo, and here's a Stargate, and here's a Cannon Rush, and here's the Dark Templar, all of that. Uh... It's only because at that, like, top slice, players are so optimized and all that. And PvP is a mess. Everybody's PvP is a mess. But, we'll see. We've got... Mm -mm -mm. Against another uh, Winter Gaming Clan member. Let's try to get a more recent one. 8.50 on Disco Bloodbath. Let's take a look. Let me... I didn't do this the last time. That was a mistake. But let's see if we can jump in. Just look at the replay because we're trying to learn how to use the replay stats. So he just has more army most of the time. It looks like... Oh, we're going to find out. I don't. It's hard to tell from this. He may be proxy... Proxy gated. The risk here is that there's nothing to actually talk about besides like, well, you got caught completely off guard and... 
I think that pylon is already too close to wall off with two gates. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll talk about that first. God damn. Well, if you can still hear me, we'll just pretend this is... Welcome to Disco Bloodbath. So, the reason, one, you open up two gates, and two, you wall off with them in Protoss versus Protoss, and that's what you see, like, at the front, is one, because Protoss units are simply so good that if you he has two Protoss units and you have one of them, that's not enough Protoss units, you're going to take a lot of damage. Two, because Adepts are really annoying, so you do a semi-wall and then put a shield battery down with a probe to block, uh, if you let Adepts into your base, or you just wall off for the sake of walling off, and you have nothing to block Adepts, or you hard wall off for no reason, then that's just a waste of money. If you are not comfortable with sitting with one probe on the top of the ramp to slap down, and you might be like, why a shield battery? Why not a pylon? A shield battery takes longer to build, uh, which means you have more opportunity to cancel it. A pylon you're going to have to micro more. Usually you don't want to keep that building there. You want to cancel it before it finishes, but a shield battery gives you extra time before you have to do that. All right. You're scouting too early. Okay? Too early. You might be like, well, I don't want to get cheesed. Here's what you've done. You're scouting so early that even if you are getting cheesed, your economy is going to be hamstrung to the point it's going to be harder to deal with it. At least... At least wait until uh, you start a gate or something. I'm not saying it's the most... It... You see, these are just ladder games, okay? Now we get the true experience of what you, uh, what you're actually doing. I'm not saying you can't cannon rush, but if you cannon rush poorly, it's extra shameful. Okay. The key to a cannon rush is, one, you gotta have pro micro. Two, you have to understand, a lot of players will cannon rush and just spend 800 minerals cannon rushing, which defeats the whole purpose. Like this. If you start a cannon rush from all the way over here, in, in right field, by the time you actually threaten anything, there's no point. If you're going to start a cannon rush, you can't. Hiding a cannon rush is not a very reliable strat. Unless you're hiding it maybe on the low ground or something. This is essentially, well, I hope you didn't see that probe in your base. Diamond League Protoss strats. This is a terrible... This Even if you can wall this off, this is a terrible location to cannon rush. Like, what are, you're cannon rushing approximately one-third of the most useless part of his base. If I was him, I probably would just ignore it. Like, just get units out and make it so it doesn't hit your nexus. So... <laughs> Are you getting a gas geyser and no gateway? Yeah, this is a pretty dumb move by him. He, if he loses his probes... Yeah. Oh, he's all... What the hell is going... Oh, he uh, he built a counter forge. I mean, that... This is like a middle school slap fight right now. It's like, well... If he has cannon... I need cannon. Um, if you see him, by the way, if you see him going cannons, you should be going, like, for, it, it's time. Unless you're going to hit his nexus, it's time to transition. Uh, I don't know why your gateway is down there. Uh, yeah, this was, like, you, you cannon rush the outside edge of his base so this did essentially nothing I don't know if there was a plan going in it feels like there may have been with the three pylon block or if you're just kind of freestyling it but 
You know, you could have just two pylon blocked on the edge of his gate, by the way. You ever watch Printf? You should watch his Saturday streams if you're going to do this. One pylon, two pylon, cannon there. Congratulations. His own gateway is part of your wall. But it's like, maybe he won't notice there's a probe in his base. Oh, no. That was most of the strat. I hate when people use my own gate against me. Okay, so th oftentimes you can get away with just being super greedy and having them continually. You did bait him into building a lot of defensive cannons. I will give you that. But this is when you build shield batteries and or cannons. Now it's a five. The cannon rush execution was mediocre. The transition out was a little better. This is a really hard game. I'm I'm gonna like. I didn't get that from the. Uh, I didn't look very closely. I should have looked at the build order. Um this file but I'm just real quick let's let's go back and let's look and see the another PvP I'm just gonna look at the build order on the one before it where that guy won um oh this time you won charge can I see the build here oh You didn't can it. I think there was a little salt there. There was a little salt in that one. Or so it seems. Both of you went charge rush, which... Okay. That's a thing you can do! But... This is based on very rough information. It's like a, a C plus. Like a cannon plus. Unfortunately, that wasn't a great example of a game. It did seem like he kind of had a transition out of it. Don't, don't do it. Find a better cheese. Proxy a robo or something. I don't know. Uh, but but overall, I'll just I'll just say generally for diamond players, the most important part of Protoss in pretty much every matchup is your first tech choice and surviving to make it effective. So that means getting your Robo or your Stargate or your Twilight on time. And then using your early game units, effectively, whether it's like against Terran, scouting with an Adept, or defending against Hellions, or against Protoss with not losing a bunch of probes to Oracles or Adepts or Cannons, uh, or against Zerg to make sure you're not getting like main busted, and then uh, scouting for Anitus or something like that. I, what I see from a lot of diamond players is, well, it's two big things. So one, there's like, they'll see something the opponent is doing and then forget about their whole plan. That's true for all races, but it affects Protoss the most because getting that tech out, if you watch like Neeb or, or Stats or Zest or, any, or Trap or any of these players, they're relying on those first early units. They're not relying on three stalkers microed against a Cyclone or something. Uh, it's about, are you going a Stargate opener? It's about what is the tech opener. It's never about what are the first two units they build. How big, a, how important is that? But if you don't just put your buildings in the right spot or get your tech in a timely manner or you forget to add on enough gateways to protect it, 
that's how you get in a troublesome spot. It's not that the tech you chose was wrong, it's that you didn't give it the opportunity to be right. So, just like in this game, well, this game wasn't a great example because of the cannon rush, but you, you saw he was pressuring after the cannons, ignore all the cannons, and then you got a bunch of money, and you don't have any extra gates, so... In this case, instead of, like, this is when more shield batteries, more cannons, because you need to get that tech up. Especially if he has the same thing. We're just, this, well said, frozen me. Um, and then we can start thinking about next steps. But until you make sure you can get it out, I just a lot of players get really distracted. And then the next step is the next level of tech. This is like the Diamond 1 Masters part of Protoss, is... Uh, okay, you got your robo out. You know how to get immortals or observers or arc. Uh, not arc. I'm ahead of myself. Warp prism. But then the amount of time it takes to get to the next step, like maybe the Terran player is countering immortals and you can't just do an immortal charge lot all in. You're going to need archons or colossi or something. The amount of times, like, they're just a minute or two or three minutes late getting archons or any other form of splash damage. That's the difference. It's not that you couldn't, it's the, that you didn't. I'd say four of those Diamond Protoss. Go into a replay of a game you lost that's, say, over eight minutes long. And pick pick any of your tech. Whatever you thought you needed to go for. It doesn't matter if it was right or wrong. Don't worry about that. But if you're going to go for Archons, you're going to go for Colossi, go back in that replay and say... When could I have gotten it? When could that Rubble Bay have started? When could that Templar Archives have started? And don't be surprised when it was over a minute earlier. It might feel like you don't have the time or the money, but if you go back, you'll see how much space you actually did have. Uh, and I think that's... When, when you're playing the game and you don't look back at your replays, it's, it's always going to feel like, oh my god, I'm getting pressured every single second. But you're really not. Calm the fuck down. So, I think we have, I was trying to do a, a little bit of a tiny wrap-up on Protoss, because I'm pretty sure the next one is not Protoss. Uh, it is. So, you know what, we're just going to skip to someone else that's not Protoss. Don't tell me. Okay, oh, okay, that's Zerg. You are that's Zerg. In my service. Diamond Zerg. Yes, not Keep Protoss, awesome of course. Streams. Perfect. Still one of my five streamers on Twitch X, Dean Club. There you go. I want to at least. Wanted Master Winter. What is Some what is this? In honor of your beautiful peony. It, it, it's mine. Is that is that Minecraft? I'm not gonna skip. We're gonna go back. I just want to talk uh, about Zerg for a bit, and I'll maybe pick it. I should have. I should have seen what races we were dealing with. It's beautiful. I thought it was an actual painting. Everything's an actual painting. <laughs> but first, Jimmy says we haven't run an ad. So, uh, if you guys could pause that block real quick, that'd be super helpful. Uh, we'll be right back to it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, I'm Winter, and I'm here to talk to you about all the exciting ways to drive up engagement statistics on YouTube and on Twitch. So, are you on YouTube right now? Are you hearing this in the background? Are you wondering why it sounds like there's an advertisement? That's because there is. But you can't skip this one, besides just kind of scrolling through the rest of the video. Too bad for you. But, how can you support more exciting content unlike this? You can smash that like button, but wait, there's more. Because apparently, according to YouTube, that's not enough. You've subscribed, you've smashed the like button, you might have even left a comment, but have you rung the bell? Because apparently, subscribing doesn't really get you that much. You also have to ring the bell to be like, yeah, actually, I really do. I didn't just, like, I actually want to watch these videos. When I subscribed, it was kind of like, eh, maybe. That's how, apparently that's how it goes, but but then you ring the bell and it's like, oh, for realsies though. Um, did you know that also exists on Twitch? How 
fun is that? Uh, there's also a bell on Twitch, because you follow a channel, mostly to just make a dumb comment, or question, or por que no los dos, but you can do that on Twitch. It's like, but really, though, for realsies. So get all those exciting notifications that I'm running reruns 24-7, like this one. Like and subscribe and all those exciting things. And save esports today, and maybe someday you, too, can be a Diamond Team Thank service. you. And I'll see you next time. Train, 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 train. Thank you for sticking around. Winter, winter brain. We have diamond zerg, or maybe hive, I don't know. I zoned out. I have an important question. So we got a Diamond Zerg or Plat, you know, High Metal League. What do you think the biggest issue is going to be for for Mr. Emperor? <laughs> wow, what a name. Um, never discovering Hive Tech Tunnel Vision, not downloading the Minimap DLC. It could be all. But what will be the biggest issue? Will Twitch chat be correct? We'll find out in a moment. Thank you for sticking around. That is a common one. I will I will say that. Let's bring it up. Wait a second. This is not what I was looking at. Yes, this one. 80 games this season. Very committed to Zerg. Not dilly-dallying with the other races. Though I do think... I do say, and I do think that, while uh, I don't know if playing random is the best way to rank up or focus, but say your worst matchup is EVP. And here that is the case by uh, a bit of a margin. Then I think just one, to alleviate some frustration, and two, to maybe learn something. Maybe uh, once a week, or for at least a few games, you play some Protoss. Uh, it doesn't even necessarily have to be in 1v1. It could be in, like, 2v2s or something. But just get a little bit of a better idea. See the other side of the story. And I know a lot of players aren't like, Oh my god, Protoss is so strong. Even though many are, for example. But uh, it's important to get perspective. You'd be surprised at how many pro players out there. Essentially, literally never. Like, just to throw game time under a particular bus... Uh, up until like a year ago, Game Time, who had qualified for WCS Challenger, 
had literally never played the other races, never had been ranked. He plays uh, Protoss, starts out in Platinum. Pretty quickly moves up, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but a lot of players don't have that much pers uh, perspective when it comes to it. And I think it's helpful to get, especially if you're frustrated uh, while improving at a lower level. So with that, let's take a look around. 80 games, not bad. Pretty, uh, you start at 3771. How is your maximum MMR also the same? Are these actual ladder games? Or... Somehow you have... Never changed your MMR. I don't know, maybe you're playing on ranked. Um, or maybe it's bugged out, who knows. But the ZVP seems to be the worst matchup. ZVT is not incredible. Good job on ZVZ. Let's see what we got. You've had a, you've had a good day in the last, well, a good last few days. 12 minutes, ZVP. 14 minutes. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll take a look at this one. On Winter's Gate. So what do we see here? A little bit of supply block action. Looks like you got a nice army value. And then you throw it all away. Um, something happens at about 8 minutes. Where you have almost double the army. And you attack. And I'm going to go ahead and assume you attack. As opposed to him attacking. I see Dark Templar in the mix. Officer Bo. But. Uh, you got 237 APM. And 4.6 screens per minute. Now. What this tells me. Is you're, do you're, you're doing a whole lot of running in place. You have almost as much APM as me. And about 5 to 6 times less screens per minute. That's what this stands for. Screens per minute are how many times. On average per minute you move your screen around and look at something else. And yes, depending on the game, they can fluctuate. But in general, is if your APM is over 10 times your screens per minute on a game that's longer than 5 minutes, so a longer game, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing is the answer. You're right-clicking up a ramp into Immortals very quickly or something. We will see. The first ZVP is a bad cannon. Is this is this the first ZVP? I'm looking at this game. You lose this game. Wait, is this yours, Mister? Okay. Also, let's have a conversation. When you when you were looking through profile names or changing, did you know you can change your profile name once a season? Like, did you pick a weird name for yourself or a bad name or are no longer on Xbox Live? At once per season, you can right click on your profile in game. You have to log in. Change profile name, and you can change it. Uh, because StarCraft 2 is so old, like many of you, don't worry, uh, that it predates the battle tag system. Uh, and you have a separate profile, as opposed to newer games like Overwatch, for example, that was post-battle battle tag system. So let's take a look. as we see here a whole lot of spamming for no reason but that's not that's fine for now it's when it it uh preempts actually doing other things is when it becomes an issue if you haven't yet make sure to check out the entirety from start to finish watching all of the ads my uh diamond to masters with less than 100 actions per minute uh, where I go nearly undefeated from the very lowest diamond all the way up to Masters as random, telling my race, trying to stay under 100 APM. I don't always do it, but it's always under. It's, it no point does it break like 140. Uh, and usually if I go over... By the way, the punishment for going over was gifting subs to the chat, so I literally had to pay for it. So 230 is... And yes, that stands out. That's what I'm looking at on that replay. That immediately stands out to me as, what are you doing?
All right, you didn't build any Zerglings. Why didn't you build any Zerglings? Has nobody ever made an Adept before? I guess in this case, maybe. Maybe we'll get lucky, but not even building four Zerglings is asking. Okay, so here's the point. If you build four Zerglings when your uh, pool finishes, this more than likely couldn't have even started. I don't know. Maybe it could have. Then the next summary is, okay, he just spent 150, 300, 450, 550 on cannon rushing your second base. I know this is a lot of things happening quickly, but here, here's what I recommend you do. Fuck off. I died to a bad cannon rush in this game. Any other replay would have been better. I'd argue that makes this the best replay. Like, this is a dumb strategy. And the worst thing you could possibly do is to freak out. The summary is don't panic. If you panic, that's how you lose. Like, you don't need to stop this. It's not in, like... You can't flank cannons, by the way. Let me just... If you had run across the map instead of chasing the probe, who, I mean, post-traumatic cannons, if you had just run across the map, he has a grand total of nothing at home, by the way. just Usually that's not the case, but he has literally nothing. So this is a great example of, of panic. Got the probe though, indeed. It's like, ah, oh, didn't see those cannons. Oh. What? So, so, here's the most important part of the game. This will happen to the best of us. And yes, we've seen games in the past when players, even like top level players, like, High Grandmaster will get cannon rushed and freak out! How do you think Haz got to the WCS Finals? Now this is the important part. Up here, and over here. You got two Zerglings in his base, you got 1,100 minerals, 456 gas, we're not supply blocked, but I got two Zerglings in his base. That seems like a priority. And this is diamond. As long as you have workers and bases, you can come back. The worker count is even. It might feel like, oh, I'm fucked. But he's a cannon rusher. Like, that was a terrible cannon rush. You have to think of both sides of the coin. Just, like, he's not some sort of super meta genius playing 4D backgammon or some shit. He's just so dumb at work. No amount of microwing two Zerglings is better than getting a lair and going up to Nidus, or getting another third, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth. In yes, all of you could afford all of that, but you got two Zerglings in his base, so you can you can just take this base. In fact, this is actually just a better third probably should have taken this base in the first place but like you can just no go take okay all right like as long if just get back to the plant where, where are you going where are you going okay this is when i don't know what your game plan was but the fact that you've gone this long and it was like it was okay to start i, I was given benefit of the doubt but Lair, Evo Chambers, Roach Warren, like literally anything. Have you spent any larva? Okay, Overlords, but were you supply block? Like, I think the panic has set in. Yeah, the panic has set in. The answer here, just to, overall, 
I'm gonna give you another replay after this, by the way. We'll get we'll look at another example, but the Lair, third, Evo Chambers, back to basics. Cause remember he didn't have jack shit at home? It looks like we're struggling there, but... Oh my god. More queens? Always more queens? The answer is always more queens. Why? What are you doing? Okay, I'm not a big I'm not a big proponent of microwing, but like notice what you've done. All of your roaches are trying to kill that one pylon, and I know you got some drones here. It's full panic. And then all of your hydras. You got the pylon, though. If you had sat at home and maxed out... I mean... The thing is, there's always something against Protoss, isn't there? That's that's why people get so frustrated playing against Protoss, is everything they have seems like it's gonna be like some dramatic game ending opportunity. But a lot of that is is kind of like whether it's cannons or void rays or DTs or twenty DTs. You you just gotta like you people give Protoss to, this is why I say play Protoss a little bit. People give Protoss way too much respect, especially in the lower leaves. It's not that scary. Like, we saw Protoss earlier. Not that scary. Alright, alright. Okay, now it's scary. I don't know. <laughs> But, okay. It happens. You panic. The idea is to play enough games so that panic doesn't set in. But... Here. Here's... You keep winning all these games pretty recently. I don't know what happened in that one. Here's a longer game on, on Disco against unranked Protoss, but probably Diamond Dish. Maybe I haven't played enough yet. Now, my I note red is ready, is ready and my, my heart, heart is, is braced. I, well, this, this still isn't your replay. We were giving him another opportunity because I will agree. That was a. Uh, but the thing is. Sometimes players panic every game. It just doesn't feel like it. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not. But we're... You're like, well, I was spending my money. Were you? Wait, was that a second probe? Okay. We're still mining gas. So the reason players pull out of gas is partially to get more minerals. Well, well, at the higher level, you pull out a gas after speed because you want to focus on getting minerals for queens and lings and drones and all that stuff. The reason why I think you should start thinking about that is because a lot of players don't pull out a gas after getting speed at the lower levels. And then what happens? It's not so much they needed the minerals. They, they needed to not have the gas in the bank. Because then, now we have this, we have this layer or no, the YOLO layer. Um, I don't know. I guess we're getting um, triple Evo chamber with 28 drones. And... Uh, 
I'm not saying you'll do that, but I'm already like with when you look when you happen to look up and you have a 200 gas. What's the plan? Is it worth to keep three in gas and get the speed overlords? I like to pull one out and keep two in gas because if you do that, uh, by the time the first queen finishes, you have almost exactly 75 gas, and that's enough for overlord speed. Okay, so you got baited. Now you have 20 lings because he made two adepts. Everybody makes two adepts. Um... This is this is panic. That's that's classic panic. This wasn't a random cannons all over your base. This was a he has one of the most standard things for Protoss to potentially have. But now it's like, well, I have all these Zerglings. Like <laughs> what am I gonna do with them? <laughs> Okay, first step, don't rally every Zergling, or at least some of your Zerglings, into the wall with your overlords. I understand, like, you got too many, but don't, don't do that. Um. Now, now it's fine to get a lair, by the way. Like, now we're, now we're ignoring the existence, potentially, of a lair for too long. It feels like a lot, a lot of games, at, like they feel like instead of a build where it's like I'm going for 40 drones and then I'm getting a, a lair and then to Evo, instead of that, it's more like a, a bingo card where we got like, what do we, or, or tic-tac-toe, it's like, all right, over here is a lair and then we got 40 drones, and then we have four gas, we got lings, it's like, and then uh, here's a free win. So, so far, looks like we've got these three. Um, it, it looks like you're just checking off random parts as opposed to having any particular order. And what, what this means is it's very hard to replicate, for one. Like, if anything happens, we're in a completely different order. There's no way to, it's it's hard to improve, but it, make meaningful improvement when there's no standard you're sticking to. There's a reason that uh, scientists do control experiments where you have the same thing happening, like X, Y, Z, and then you change one thing. But if, if X, Y, and Z are suddenly Y, Z, and X this game, and then next game they're Y, 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 it's like, why are you even bothered? What are you even reacting to? You got Overlord speed, but do you know what he's doing? He has units. Another Overlord's dying, by the way. That's the benefit of Overlord speed, is they can die more regularly. Uh, a bunch of random, like, he made two Adepts, and you made 20 lengths. That means to me you don't have a plan. That's the summary. Like, you gotta be able to get to lair, or at least mostly to lair, without completely swerving all over the place. I'm, 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 a, I'm actually asking now, Mr. Singularity slash Emperor, what is the plan? Right now, what is the plan? What are you going for? If you had to summarize in two sentences, what are you going for? How do you win the game? Because, uh, just, just to point out, there's no lair, no upgrades, we got lings and banes, three base saturation, well what are the bane lings for? Then hive, then, then hive, well to get a hive you need a lair, survive to broods, Jimmy, it's like, well, my camera just did what your game plan did, which is freeze for an inordinate amount of time and then... Just come back, be like, okay, what's happening? Safety banes. Yes, yes, yes. But Just he has a stargate. 
he, he has Silver a star Terran. gauge. Every TVT goes Silver into Terran. Long sled fest. So here's I here's my coaching for you. Uh, play more games and get out of silver. We'll, we'll see at the end of this. PTSD from Charge All Ends. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to go ahead and panic against what you've seen, as opposed to panicking against threats from the the past PVZs. And this is why, especially Zergs, but also Terrans, struggle so much against Protoss, because like I was mentioning, the PTSD from whatever random ass thing they died to six games ago is somehow affecting this game. You have seen no indication whatsoever that he is going charged. You haven't even seen... Okay, you saw Twilight. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You did. And if we hadn't seen the Stargate, I'd be like, well, there might be a risk here. But multiple times, your overlords have flown into like three or four stalkers. Your beautiful speed overlords that you randomly got, they've flown into stalkers. Charge that all ends with only stalkers are pretty tough to pull off. So what I'm saying is, despite that cannon rush game being all panic and tilting, what I'm assuming is a Protoss enters the game and then you hurt yourself in your own confusion like a particularly challenged Pokemon. I'm I'm not even saying like you're in a terrible spot. Okay? Like you're you you're the plan of three base saturation into hive is good, but you can't just be like a uh, bunch of lings, yada yada yada, hive tech. Like that the yada is important. And what does that mean? Okay? Is he taking a third? Is he actually attacking? If you have speed overlords, how many gates does he have? Is he moving out? Like, do, is he going for Archons, or is he going for more Stargate? Because there are so many different flavors of things that could just walk across and kill you, even if you think you're building enough units to be safe. Like, if he shows up with three Archons, you can't just... Because the three Archons just killed your entire Ling Force four seconds before your fucking Hydra showed up. Your Hydras are showing up like, wait a sec, I was told there would be Zerglings. I was told I wouldn't be standing here to face super mega energy balls that are punching through my face on my own. I thought there'd be something. But no. Thankfully, there are... Well, there were just enough. Like, like, this entire strat seems like a bingo card. We're still on the bingo card. It's like, all right, all right, all right. We got, we got Spire. We got plus one air. We got Hydra. We got Infestation Pit. Do we have a bingo yet? No, I don't have Brood Lords. Ah. Like, you're upgrading plus one air weapons for no air units. You're like, well, I want to go for uh, Brood Lord tech. In order to get to Brood Lord tech, you have to live. Also, just building a whole... If your solution to anything is just build more Banelings, you better be very confident that what you need is Banelings. All right, Rogue? I would argue most Diamond Leaguers, the solution should not be more Banelings. Um, as opposed to possibly anything else. Like, go Roach Hydra. Roach Hydra, at least your units don't die when they attack. They just die shortly after. Hydraling Bane is a recipe for your entire army to be uh, completely wiped out while you're looking at four queens jerking off in the main. Magnifique.
And now, like, since you... This this was my point originally. Let's bring it back one more time. Where Where is my... Jimmy... So this was the replay. We're up against... Uh, who is it? Purple. His name is just Purple. What I, this was my point, originally. You've got 200 actions per minute, and you have less than 10 screens per minute. That, that, the argument here is that for every screen, every time you change to a different screen and look at something else, you're doing 20 things. That's the rough estimate. But what that in reality means, Let's just break it down in the form of one fight. Let's break it down. Um, what I'm trying to point out is you're trying too hard and doing too little. For example, by going for Hydra Bane. Let's just, just we're going to slow it down and watch the actual actions that you are making. This is after a bunch of your lings got wiped out. There you go. Some of that is just building a whole bunch of larvae. But, all right. By the way, you already lost a bunch of your Hydras before this fight started. Attack quick, 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 attack quick. How many? Let me see if I can count how many times you attack clicked your Zerglings through over and over while they were dying the storm. Let's 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 see. Because you can see it pulse each time. It's like, well, if I just really, really could have been there, they will somehow do by the way. This is what happened before. Okay, you know what? I didn't even realize those. I thought they were Hydras. Nope, they were all of the Banelings you spent a thousand fucking gas on. How many Banelings do you have? You, in this army, have 27 Banelings. That is literally, not, that is literally a thousand and fifty gas of Banelings. All right? One thousand and fifty gas. The United States has invaded countries for less gas than that, and you just go AFK oh, and attack into in one Archon, three Zealots, and a Stalker. I... I, I want to see, I want to see exactly how much they killed. Okay. Slow it down. I believe you've got about 10 charge lots, a couple stalkers, and part of an Archon. Is that what you envisioned? Your Baneling card is revoked. No more. Okay? All those, you see? No. No more, no more Baneling. No more Baneling for you. Honestly, probably no more Zerglings. Yes, this yes, is yes. why I say build Roach. Just as I deserve. Roach Hydra is the unenthusiastic the hand job of won. unit composition. All right, one. it's not it's not one. exciting. Um, it's not it's not maybe your first choice you think, but you don't deserve anything more. Is the summary. So, guess what? Either Zerglings or nothing. Um. So. Because your banelings, you are like that was terrible. That was just so bad. Like I don't even think you weren't looking. You weren't looking at this entire situation. You've got 200 actions per minute. Not a single one was keeping those banelings in some sort of reasonable place. And then another great example comes right after. It's like oh shit, there's an army over here. Just just watch the clicks specifically. Right click, right click, a a click, a click, a click, a click, a click. Why do you like your APM 300, 400 right now? What I need you to do is you need to get under 120. I actually want you to try to stay under 120 actions per minute. All right, because I think you'll actually do better. It might seem counterintuitive, but only because, like, like right now. Well, he has an army here, and since we're not allowed to use the mini-map, or apparently webcam drivers, we don't notice this entire base dies to five zealots. Five zealots don't kill a base that quick. That's just how long has this been going on? 
Your army is right there. Look at the amount of time. This is sped up. And then, they're in your natural. He's just shift clicked. You know how long it takes to kill a goddamn lair? And then your main. Wow. Will we get it? Not quite. Oh, yes, he did. Wait, how did that even happen? Oh, what a fucking hero, Zealot. That was Bob right there. That was Bob. I had lost five games in a row. Then you said, calm the fuck down, and then I won. You can have credit for that win. I'll take the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Vilharnan, by the way. That donation, I was yelling over. Um, so... If 200 APM isn't solving your problem, the answer here is not to get faster, it's to get smarter. You're working very hard and getting very little done. It's like being Amish in 2019, okay? You might feel like you're accomplishing a lot. I don't know if this makes you feel good on the inside or whatever, but it's not working for you. Like, if, if there is a scenario where five zealots kill three of your bases, and that's not even your biggest problem, something's gone horribly wrong. Um, so your Baneling card is revoked. Honestly, this is truly, I've said this so many times, and you're just an advanced platinum. You get four zerglings at the start of the game. Get Zergling speed, sure, if it makes you feel better, so it doesn't fuck up your build. You get four links. I'll give you up to eight. That's it. Anything else in the early game that isn't proxied can be dealt with with queens, roaches, or basic common sense, or some combination of the three. But Zerglings are, are hurting you. Making Zerglings, like... Making Zerglings encourages you to build Banelings. Building Banelings is painful for everyone involved uh especially the banelings stop it stop it 120 apm calm the fuck down no more of these silly lings you can stick with the lisks but lings like you have plus one air weapons well you don't even you don't have a lair anymore because random ass zealots just walked in but you've got corruptors for no air units you have plus one air for those corruptors you never got a hive like Stop playing bingo and and start building your little Lego house of a build. I don't... Banes versus Marines still good? No. No more Banelings for you. Stop. Don't don't come back until you, you cut Banelings out of your life. You suicidal Zerg. It says... Is this D3? Is it D D3? Wait, I could see the MMR. We have that. D2. By the way, do you want to know where the cutoffs are for other ranks? SC2ReplayStats.com. I've been talking about it. Boom. Global letter rankings. I wonder. And you can also search up profiles and all that. Uh, so, so D3 was the only way we are going to avoid this. It's a C-. minus. It's a, I would have believed you were platinum. You try hard. Well, I can see that sometimes the Banelings do well enough. Like against Terran, they'll, be, they'll do better sometimes. Against Zerg, who knows, right? But it's... You can't... Play, we're not playing Bing... This isn't Star Chess... You can't just build random units and hope you get enough of them in whatever order that you're. it's eventually a good army. It doesn't work. I spent way too much time on that. But yes, mostly because yes, everybody yes. else seems... Just as I deserve. Imagine how it feels to be that larva, birthed by a queen, turns into a zergling, endures the pain of a baneling war, waits for his time to shine, and it gets rolled into an archon. 
Those poor banelings. Those poor banelings. Next up was a rogue ninja. What a name. Not only a rogue, but a ninja. A rogue ninja. How crazy is that? And a Silver League Protoss, who's played 142 games this season at a 51% win rate. Wow. Uh, looks like PVZ on the flip side is uh, a, a bit of a struggle. Um, as we can see, 12 and 22 this season. So, I'm... You you are my inspiration. Um me inspiration for what? Is my... It's a great question, isn't it? StarCraft 2 just generally. Okay, well, let's continue um that. Okay, let's find a Protoss Versus Zerg. Looks like you were able to take out Ouchtown and Juice, but Dusty and uh, Star were a bit too much. Um. Wow. Uh. <laughs> let's let's look at your game against T Rex. Eh, he's unranked. I won't do that. All right, we don't know. Maybe, maybe he happens to be a Diamond League or Troll. Maybe, probably not. But. How about Star or against Star on Ephemeron? Just yesterday. Let's take a look. Mm hmm. So, what do we see from this? We see Glaives was researched at some point. At what point was that? You started with Charge and then you ended up with all the other upgrades. I guess that's fine. Average unspent, pretty good. 53 APM, but 4.5 screens per minute. So, just since this is all tied together, this is a whole marathon video. You're not done yet. Do not hover over the bar that shows how much time is left. There's so much more content, and if you if you do that, it's ruining it and spoiling it. You probably just did it, but... So, this is a Silver League game. You're at 53 APM. I'm not gonna... This, this to me, is not like, oh, wow. He, so he is bad. No, that's that's good. That's actually good. Now the question is, like, is it is it you can't get better, or like, are we working towards it? We're gonna find out. Like, cause if those precious few actions you have less than a stopwatch, um. Or if they're used in reasonable ways, but sometimes oh, you just don't have enough, that's fine. But if it's like, I'm walling off my own mineral line and building four inspired. cannons, well, not as fine. Thank you, Master Tom. Like, I'm 142 games in silver. I spent over 100 games in silver when I started out. All right. Eventually, this is a real issue. I have no idea what these frame issues are, but um, apparently... It's like, simmer down, chill out. The amount of games is inspiring. No, no, no. Now, the percentages were very different in the beginning wings of it. Uh, Silver, like, Bronze League was, like, 20%. Silver League was a bit above it. Silver League now is essentially the Bronze League of wings, but everybody starts somewhere. So, we will see. There's potential here for a lot of hope, but there's also potential for intense sadness. Okay, so, more like, well, you, you missed a probe, but close enough. All right, we're going to find the chrono boost button. Whatever. Okay. I didn't miss a probe. Um, do you know what miss a probe is, means? Do you know what that means? I did. Okay, so watch the production tab, and also continue to argue with me. I'm sure it'll go well. Uh, 
watch the production tab and there should be no point for more than a few seconds you're not building a pro for the first two minutes all right if if what you meant was no probe came into my base the answer would be technically correct because he's zerg but um <laughs> Yes, let me just... Now, this might... You might. You probably watched. Yes. Said we're gonna watch. Shut up, me. But just a refresher for everyone. Um, here... here. Now, this is your Protoss versus Terran build. But just real quick. Uh, the Protoss build order. And this is pretty true for most matchups. The scouting info can be a little different. But, anyways... 14 pylon, 16 pro, chrono boost, build a gate, scout with the pro, 17 assimilator, two more probes, 19 probe can go down the ramp, if he's already there, build a cyber core instead, now 21 gas, 21 pylon, 22 if you won't forget, but you will forget, so stop fucking around. On the other side, does he have a gas? Yes, then you need maybe two build units. But if he has a Rex and just one gas, you're fine. Stop freaking out. Where's your second pylon? You need a pylon. You are platinum. Do you want to be diamond? Well, guess what? Fuck you. Build a second pylon. Where's your second pylon? You need a second pylon. Build a second pylon. Okay, oh, with that said. You are now in my service. Yay, parting feels so good. Build another probe, PVZ. Not, keep, just build probes. Build probes. Build probes. There's no scenario where you're like, well, I gotta cut a probe out of my build. Build probes. Use the Protoss build command if you want that audiobook. He built the second pylon. I'll give him that. Oh, no. Oh, you know, that's not a. That's. Besides building a zealot here, honestly, this is better than many. We who was that? Who was the diamond or gold earlier? I don't know. Let's throw them both under the bus because they were both bad at it. Well, one of them cannon rush, but okay. You don't. Well, now we're the. I mean, that's a that's the correct wall. I'll be honest. I didn't learn to do that efficiently until. Well past silver. That is how you wall it off. Correctly. I'm here in the and now, while we did forget about any other tech, the wall off, that, that is more than I expected. The first form shall purchase. It's silver. Just getting the wall off, not being supply blocked, and building probes, and eventually getting tech is not so. Like, that's solid platinum. Like, solid platinum so far. And hopefully, not forgetting completely about tech. Now, you gotta remember. Uh, oh, this is the one time. We're freaking out and not taking a third was valid. I love how the probe <laughs> probe's like, ah, fuck off. I gotta, I don't have time for this shit today, Zerglings. This is the one time it's actually like, well, maybe you need to build some units. <laughs> oh, okay, not, okay, okay, okay. I appreciate the gates. Um, that, that's a little, Eight max on two base. All right. Oh, 
No, can't shoot far. If you build a Stargate to counter that Overlord. Unfortunately, no plan survives contact with the enemy. And the plan here was already very, uh, it was fragile. It is at risk right now. It's a real issue. Those freezes. Um, it is at risk right now of being shattered. It, this is the moment where either we somehow swerve, like, like back on course, or we're going to make, like, Mass Void Ray or something. I don't know. Let's find out. Go get him. I don't know about those weren't the greatest force fields. Okay. I think we need to pull out like I have a lot of we have a lot of literature that people don't realize. Uh here's another. So this is something. Um here's a Protoss tier unit list. Um this this is going to become relevant. So here are your here's your tier list. I want you to notice this one. Uh, centuries, yeah, cool idea, not gonna work out. Adepts, mediocre. Um, stalkers, war prisms promote tryharding. The immortals are good. Zealots pretty good. Archons pretty good. Um, okay, I need to be clear because. It looks like you're taking this seriously. This is mostly sarcastic, but not entirely. Um, it's mostly sarcastic. Uh, just immortal archon charge lot. If you have like sentries, don't build more than like two. You're not gonna force field. Those force fields looked like you were using a controller with too high sensitivity. Okay, Florencio, calm down. So just more zealot. Some Legacy of the Void trailer shit right here. It is the moment when you have one immortal and 11 charge lots that you remember, wait a second, those aren't charge lots. I need to build a Twilight Council. I can see your eyes. I give it five seconds. Mm. Right. Oh. Oh. Oh, you can do it! Come on! Come on! Okay. Ten seconds was was probably a better guess. Like, it was there. I don't know how active it was, but like... like something's not right here. <laughs> I can tell. You, you, you have the whisper. It's like, it's like a two-year-old. They can't speak very well. And they couldn't put their thoughts together in a coherent manner. But much like a Silver Leaguer, they got the idea. Like, <laughs> I had to find the button. There it is. Glory to the okay. All right. This is not tower defense. You can build other types. Like... Ta-da. Oh, no, no, no. Not a stalker wave. No! Oh, you only built two. Hey, did you just queue up every Twilight upgrade? The council is in session. You know... <laughs> at least he got a Twilight. Alright? Give him that. <laughs> the council will hear your arguments. Wait, can I predict the Templar Archives? This won't be the time. This is the time to warp in another round of charge lot. And now we get the Templar Archives because now it's like, huh, I have all this stuff, but what else was in the Legacy of the Void trailer? There was a pylon, there were charge lots. 
Remember that cool part where the Archon was like... And then it phased out of existence, which doesn't exist in the game. I don't understand what that was in the trailer, because it's also not in the campaign, but whatever. Uh-oh. Oh no. I mean... You saw when he got Storm? I didn't actually see when he got Storm. I, did, I didn't actually remember he got Storm. Does he get Storm? Don't get Storm. That's too much micro. Don't get Storm. Get Archons. I don't... It has to be... Oh no. Oh, for... There it is. Sometimes it takes losing a bunch more units. He has a 64 kill high Templar. Oh yeah! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We gotta, we gotta predict which Templar. I did, I did see that. That, but that's not an Archon. Let's, let's, let's predict when Sergeant Silas the Destroying comes in. Now here's the thing. It's one high Templar walled off, using its water balloons with no storm. All right, that's that's what it is. How did you know? <laughs> yeah, what is the probe count? More probes. 50 probes by eight minutes. I mean, he's... Okay, shift click. Have we heard about the shift key before? I'm not... Like, that's how you add to control groups. That's how you take away from control groups. That's how you queue up things. I believe you've done that already. Use the shift command with the shift key command. Maybe both. Because I don't feel like spending time explaining it again. Which one of you is the... Su oh, my God. Seventy-five max for probes. If you like, if you have to actually ask what the maximum for probes is, we're well past the problems we're gonna have in the metal leagues. All right. If you're asking the maximum probes, you better be at least diamond. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. Oh. And they're gone! I wonder where he'll attack next. Could it be the third base we've tried to take four times? Could it be that one? Awesome. That's actually a really good storm. Just wasn't good enough. Okay. So. I want you to max out by 13 minutes. Five Immortals, five Archons, five Charge Knots. Okay? 50 probes by eight minutes. If he's not letting you take a third, you take a third. No, none of this Warp Prism harass. Because just think about it. Look at the situation right now. Even if you did damage, we are not at the level where harassing your opponent is going to do anything other than get you an uncomfortable lawsuit. Because... Even if you killed all his drones, here's the danger of your high bronze, low plat place. I know we're in so. Even if you kill all of his units, it's almost impossible to know whether he has enough money in the bank to literally make all of them again. So let's just focus on you. Your greatest enemy is yourself. And I gotta commend you on playing so many games. You're getting a little off track. Like, we can stop the bad habits here. No warp prism harass until you got three bases and you got 150 supply. Then you can warp prism harass all the way like it's the 60s, okay? Those workers, all right, they're not your workers. Do whatever you want. But 150 supply, three bases, lock it down, then go ahead. I 
I think if you just really take all those dozens of actions and you focus towards that goal, then you will find yourself building the right army in a timely manner. There's potential. The problem is, you keep distracting yourself just a little bit, and then suddenly 80 Zerglings come in and kill your base again. Because you just are not fast enough to do more than one thing at once, but if you make that one thing good, eventually you'll win. Like, okay, like seven times now, he's run into this base and killed it before you were over at that base. What do you think you need to, to stick with me? What do you think you need to do with your army so that doesn't happen? Hmm? Instead of, instead of here, maybe, maybe, just, just maybe, we put it over here. And I know you're not using control groups, but, but you got them for your nexus, so that's uh, that's most of the way there for now. Um, are the Zerglings right here? Oh, I'm a fucking genius. Or I've played StarCraft before, and this guy has done the same thing every single time. So, I did not expect it to be right on the map, but... Like... It, it isn't a massive logical leap to think, huh, maybe he'll do the same thing he's done every two minutes. And three, two, one. Zerglings, now. Zerglings, now. Okay. Oh no! He attacked the base with a bunch of Ligs and Maids! Who could have expected this? How crazy! No GG! Fuck you, no GG! Alright? You GG. Every single game. I know you might misclick it sometimes. And now here's why. Here's why. You might It might be an ace. But here's my thought process. Not, not everybody subscribes to this, but they should subscribe to this channel, whichever one it is, uh, after smashing the like button and the bell. Anyways, Typing GG at the end of the game is not for your opponent, it's for you. I used to be a salty fuckboy in the Silver Leagues and the Diamond Leagues where I'd have the thought, I don't even know if this is it, this is just for everyone. Um, I would actually have, Jimmy, God damn it! What the? I would actually have the kind of like internal, well, he cheesed me, or I didn't play well, or he got lucky, or whatever. And I'd be like, well, it wasn't a good game, so I won't GG. And I would some games not GG. I know, right? Like, uh, But do you think that's a healthy uh, internal discussion to have? Do you think it's going to promote a positive um, productive mindset to be constantly judging whether or not you played well or they played well or whether it was fair or whatever do you think you're going to get better more quickly if you're doing that every game it is not helpful it is not going to help you improve the vast majority of people who aren't from Finland uh, it's a completely irrelevant conversation if you think you played badly and they got lucky well good for them good game and you figure that out later. But I think that can help some people. If you are do find yourself having that discussion, in one way or another, that it can help a little bit. Fake it till you make it, right? Like, And then maybe at some point, you'll treat every game like a good game and be ready to go into the next one. I don't think that's a problem for you, Mr. 142 Games this season. Um, but I'm saying for other people who have played a fraction of that and might be a higher league but are, are such have such a fragile ego they are unwilling to lose more than two games a day without saying oh I don't know I'm gonna get demoted so A I think by the end of the season you will be gold it might take a few more games but you got you were going the right direction you distracted yourself it's for silver 
if it appears you have an idea of what you should be doing on top of playing that many games, it takes some time, but you'll get there. It, it's not an A+, plus because you keep forgetting that, um, well, a whole lot of things, but the basics are there. <laughs> So, next up, how many more do we have of the account-based ones? Because we have some individual ones people are sending in. For those just joining, or who skipped to this point in the video for some reason, uh, we're going a little deeper, because this is a marathon. This is more than one game at a time in a vacuum. Like, this isn't just Diamond Protoss, or Silver Protoss, or Gold Protoss. It's mostly been Protoss. There hasn't been a single Terran. But... Uh, we're looking at an SC2 replay stats account. We're looking at how many games you're playing, how often, uh, if there's anything we can point out on each replay. I'm picking from the worst matchup only from people who played a significant amount of games this season. Um, and then just picking a random game. Maybe maybe it was a terrible game, maybe it wasn't. But that it was a game. That's what matters. So The next one, and the last one of our... Uh, um, account based one I know we do have let me just spoil here a little we had from Lucas I guarantee you this will at least end on a Terran if this isn't a Terran doesn't look like this well, actually is it random are you random I don't know anyways drop.sc not using SC2 replay stats not connecting we'll figure that out later um, how many? How do I get my replays from SC2 stats to you? You link them. We got a gold Terran. So here are the two types of Terrans. There are no platinum Terrans. Okay. You might be like, well, <laughs> let's see if statistically that gets backed up. Let's find out. Um, I think we broke SC2 replay stats, guys. It's acting real slow. Uh, the summary is, there are bronze, silver, gold players, half of which started as Terran because they played the Wings of Liberty campaign and thought it was cool. And then the other half are like, well, Terran is the hardest race, so I'm going to play Terran for my four games per season. Um, but, uh, and then, well, a lot of them hit a wall. Protoss and Terran hit a wall at gold, I find, from all of your decidedly less than experienced replays and then that wall is a little higher for zerg i think it is a little easier for the average zerg to get to platinum why is this because because of the nature of zerg zerg you don't have to put your buildings in the same place if you just build a bunch of zerglings you're gonna win a uh an amount of games that protoss and terran players don't really have a strategy that can match like building a bunch of marines doesn't have the same winning potential uh, as building a bunch of Zerglings really quick. Literally, Zerg rushing is why there are more uh, more people who get to Platinum easier Zerg. But the Zerg players hit that wallet plat because if you get past gold as Protoss and Terran, you're starting to be like, oh, so this is how you wall off. These are the units I need to build. I don't need to get turrets or cannons for no reason. Like, And then the Zergs are like... Why couldn't I get my Zerglings in this base? I even built Banelings, too. I don't understand. And then... <laughs> I ran up the ramp into tanks so many times, but the tanks did not run out of ammo. Um, and then the next wall for all players is that diamond. But uh, I find a lot of players for Protoss and Terran get stuck on gold longer and uh, platinum for Zerg for longer. And then diamond is a mixed bag. Um, but with that, back to our Terran hero. Uh, well, the last game he played was Terran. Um, overall, I, it, yes, Terran, you're Terran. Or, or not. Or Zerg, wait, what? Zerg. But with a lot of Terran mixed in. So this is Zerg. So Terran players just... You got a lot enough. We've had so many diamond replays for Terrans in the past. We can we can focus a little more here. Um, 
So, so Zerg? Okay. Zerg versus Proton, Zerg versus Zerg. ZVT. We'll mix it in that way. ZVT. Mirror matchups are... Mm. That's a kind of a hard one. Um, cause they're like there are a few basic things in each mirror matchup you need to do for each race. Uh, Zerg versus Zerg, essentially you gotta make it so you don't die every time if they make a single baneling. You gotta learn how to in this case, now this is why Zerg versus Zerg is a struggle for the Metal Leagues. Is because you know how strong that, that Zergling Baneling rush is against Terran and Protoss? Well guess who it's also good against? Zergs who don't know how to wall off. So how do you like that, Zerg players? You never figured out how to put two buildings together in a decent location? Well, guess what? Now there are banelings in your base, and since you're using the Select All Army hotkey, you're just panicking until 44 lings implode. Uh, or you learn how to wall off with two Evo Chambers, a Robo, and a Queen, and suddenly half of Zerg players, their entire build is negated. But with that, we're back to it. We're looking at ZVT. Let's filter. Anonymous. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Were you rage quitting against Terrans? All right, here, here. This looks like a decent thing. We have against Wolfgang. A gold league. Okay. So. Hey, Nadrix. There's time. I'd appreciate my There's, my there's, game there's plenty of time. And we're not even talking about the Chinese terror. Um, Jimmy, do we have time? We'll do it live? Do it live! All right, do it live. So some, ba some small supply blocks here. It's not the end of the world, is what it looks like. Um... We're seeing a pretty solid, like, there's nothing that stands out. There's not a huge, like, this is, this stands out for him, the Terran. Um, now, this very much stands out. 1.5 screens per minute. Wow. And he had 1.5 as well. Like, this is an even match. That is, on average, every minute of this... 19 minute game you looked at less than two different camera areas like looked at less than two screens um so for both players and I'm pretty sure this is a turtle mac Terran um that is that is too low like Unless the, I, I, there is no scenario where I don't know what it's going to look like. But what that either means is, one, you're just expanding far too slowly. Two, just completely not camp. Like, the reason why Zergs usually have a little higher, um, especially at the mid-level, is because of camera, like, like uh, Queen Injects. Are my other ones that bad? I, I, we'll take a look. I'll look at... Another replay or two. I actually want to see. That's a good idea. How about against... This is a 36-minute game. A longer game. Longer games tend to have more, not less, because there's more stuff going on. You're at one. This is you playing as Terran. Less than one, which is... Uh, wow. Uh, for reference, our last player had four, and he was in silver. Um, that's... Okay. Here is two in ZVZ. Um, here, here's the ZVP. 24 minutes. 2.5. This is a. Uh, this is not an easy fix. What was the replay we were gonna look at? Uh. <laughs> Not against applying lube. Oh yeah, I was gonna filter it. Zerg versus Terran. Um, against Wolfgang. Wolfgang. It was. Yeah. And this is up against Turtle Mac, which is the question we always get. We'll see if Broodlords are ever discovered. Might I point out 
that by the end of the game, the upgrades that you have, I can just see at the end of the game. I don't know why the indicator look. Yeah, it's, uh, that, it's a little bugged out. The upgrades are plus two melee attack, plus two carapace, plus one flyer attack, and then speed for links and banes, and that's it. Like, it's not nothing, but okay, you got overlord speed as well, so you, that way you can not look at things faster. But down the. All right. Well, let's take a look at this. I don't have a great solution because a lot of players will have too high APM and lower screens per minute, which means they're trying to do a, they're, they're have a bad, well, the, the APM isn't super high. It's just, well, let's see. Okay, hotkey the hatch, hotkey your hatchery. Use a, use a hotkey for your hatchery. You hotkey your hatchery. Put your hatchery on a on a hotkey. Okay, here's what you want to do: is you want to first thing of anything in the entire game, is you want to. There, like it shouldn't be forty seconds in. Okay. I just I want to I want to check the stats on How many games have you played Zerg on this map? This is your third game this season. I will give you that. But like you you are looking well, I mean, let's Let's just do all match. Wait, what it? Oh, okay. Please roast me. I play a lot. Like, it looks like you're surprised to be here. You're looking around like, huh, what's this? Huh, what's over here? Huh, where does this go? Huh, huh. We got a... Like, like you didn't expect to have brought overlords to this party, and now you don't where to put them. No, don't know where to put them. Rather, it's like, well, you walked in with it. I told you not to bring it. It's like, well, just set it on that. Oh, is that no? It's, I think somebody else's stuff. <laughs> We're on your camera, by the way. So here's the difference. So you either have a pro player or a wannabe tryhard. If their camera looks like this, like... But you know you got a Bronze League hero or something close if it looks like... Okay, so a few things, a few things, if you haven't watched my whole 10 minute long, I know it's crazy, it might be less than that. Settings guide. Drag scroll, actually not drag, mouse scroll, okay? So, one of the cutest things I have ever seen, and then less cute depending on who it is, but we were at Psy Storm Cup, the little girl, uh, the daughter of one of the players there, um, the one who crowned Neeb as a noob, got him, by the way, got him, Neeb, ended that man's career. Uh, she was playing StarCraft. Um, I watched her playing. The way she moved her camera, um, was with the arrow keys, like, like, which you can technically do. Did you guys know that? So tell me right now, are you using the arrow keys? There was a guy who was also using WASD, which is like, I don't, you had to rebind to make that happen, but. So you're not using the arrow keys. Okay. Now, the default for all of these is 20%. 20% is not enough 
for the vast majority. If you're going to be dragging, it's better to use the minimap or camera locations, but your mouse scroll speed. I use drag scroll as well for some things, which is the middle mouse I use. But if you're on, if, if I see you dragging around, I bet yours is on 20%, which is why when you're looking around the map, it looks like... Because you have to, like, physically... You know what I'm saying. If you want to do a mediocre thing better, at least speed it up. Oh, jeez. I keep, like, whenever I have to multiple times check whether or not I'm still on your camera, that's how you know it's slow. I'll, like, turn it up. Uh... Get the fuck out! You just got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. I don't mind. And this explains some of the SPM, but not for the other games. That might be a bit of an overreaction. You could have probably held this with the second base, but... Well, I, I I have no idea where we go from here. Because what if he just walks around? Uh... Okay. <laughs> Away he goes. To infinity and beyond. Can't follow that command. Oh, you're using the uh, bitchy girlfriend of announcers, Nova. Okay then. God, the freezes are really bad. But this, I, you, well, you definitely defended. I would argue this is incredibly overcommitting. Um, if he's not building bunkers down your ramp yet, you can like probably hold the low ground. But a queen's just been born. Okay. Uh, he, he walked away. Mm. Oh, he didn't entirely walk away. Oh, no. So, yeah. The lair isn't a bad reaction. Nidus might be a good idea. the worst breakout I've ever seen. I will... It wasn't, a, it wasn't terrible. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. Okay. Alright. Are your drones striking? Always a dangerous proposition. Okay, do, do you see the drones? Right there! Alright, so here's a pro tip. Control selects all of a type of thing. Whatever that type of thing you're trying to select. Whether it's all the, say, queens, control click, all the drones. You want to select all your idle workers. Default hotkey is control is F1. If you hit control and hit F1, bam. You just selected all the idle drones. And then right click right on down. Field depleted. I'm for like I don't recommend Spire because then you're gonna probably make mutas and then you're gonna try to micro mutas, which is gonna go poorly. 
or you're alternatively not going to make mutas, in which case, why did you get a spire? Nothing left in that evolution. Corruptors. Looks like your okay. brood has evolved. What is this? Honestly, this doesn't look as bad. No, okay, okay, okay. So, you saw all of that. And now it's time for a Nidus. You saw all that and you're like, if I could just get a Nidus in his base. What are you going to do once you're at his base? What's the plan? What's the plan? What, like, you get in there. You got a bunch of lings. You got a bunch of lings, maybe a few banes and corruptors. What's the plan? Uh oh. Okay. All right. So overseers. Oh god. Flying DTs. Oh my god. Okay, so now we're gonna learn about control groups in on lesson two of things I explain in my 15 minute long hotkeys guide. Control groups. Do you want to use the select all army hotkey, but you don't want to have all your lings die to banshees? Doesn't matter. Whatever. Fuck it. Click on the select all army hotkey. Control click corruptors. Suddenly you only have corruptors. Bam. Control three. And now we have a corruptor control group. How useful is that? Once more, very slowly. Select all army hotkey. Control, held down, and then on down here, click corruptor. Now only corruptors are selected. Control, one, two, three, eight, whatever. And then you have a control group of just corruptors. If you insist on using the select all army hotkey, there you go. You forgot you had them? You've been back and forth across your damn screen three times! Mutation complete. You forgot... There's still seven idle drones. Like... Or I was hiding them. You were hiding them. So either you forgot you had them, or you were hiding them. Those are the options. Which do you think is worse? Which do you think is dumber? I'm, I, that's a legitimate question. Which one is dumber? Because it's a, it's a hard... Honestly, whichever one you think is dumber, I'm going to go ahead and say the opposite was dumber. Because they're both very dumb. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Corruptors flew by as well. Hiding. Hiding. All right. I was hiding them. Let us, uh... Let us see how well hidden they were. Let's look at the, uh... Banshee cam. All right, because I guarantee he was just staring at his Banshees. It's like a Banshee cam, man. Oh, wow. This is literally, like, this is, we're on his camp. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at home. Very well hidden. Very subtle. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean he can't see you. To continue along the uh, two-year-old comparisons. Okay, all your units are now in the Nidus. Our base is under attack. Forces have encountered the enemy. No more Nidus. No Nidus. No Nidus for you. Okay? 
If you can't remember what units you have, no putting them somewhere where they could either all die or be hidden from you. No, no more. No more Nidus until you have 200 supply. Okay? And then you get to you get a bonus Nidus for doing a good job. No more no more Nidus. No. I'm going to hide all my units and then I I'm I'm going to type has been defeated and he might leave the game. I'll get him. This is every game. Every game you hide units from yourself and then die. How is every game get proxy raxed, panic into dying to banshees when you have corruptors into hiding your own new units from yourself i tell you i suck i got that you said you said you've been playing for a month and in that time you have not looked at any of the guides or basic tutorials or anything like that that people have put out i assume because every single one of mine says build roaches and i don't see any roaches i don't know they might be in the fucking nidus network but I'm pretty sure there ain't no roaches. It's a lot harder to fuck up roaches. They, they, they're, they're all... Essentially, they're the training wheels of Zerg. I'm pretty sure if you look, look at Vibe's lauded bronze to GM guides as well, I'm pretty sure he's not like, try to Ling Bane micro your way out of the gold league. I might be wrong, but I doubt it. Under attack. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> the thing is, he actually jumped directly into your corruptors. Which is best possible case scenario for you. <laughs> Cause I think you actually kill the battle cruisers now. Like This is the only scenario. There's anything else? Well, he kills all the corruptors, but still, like, it, it literally could not have been better. Like, that was the only way any battle cruisers die. Like, the fact you're in his base is a is a Christmas miracle right now. I don't even understand. This is, oh, this is a whole experience. Um, you know what's more important than anything else is making sure that refinery don't mind no more. All right. I don't, I don't, this, it's like you're both, this is, this game is essentially a Midwestern goodbye, where nobody wants the other person to leave, well, they might want to leave, or want them to leave, but they just keep going back and forth, like, oh, I'll see, you, we'll, we'll see you next time, oh, we should get together, oh, just add me on, oh, 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 did I show you, did I show you our photos from the last time we got together two weeks ago, oh, no, okay. All right, what about these battle? We got oh, I got some great pictures of battle cruisers in here. Come on, okay, real quick, real quick. Oh, did, have you seen my corruptors? My corruptor collect? It's right in the other room. Okay. So what I'm assuming here is both of you keep forgetting about the units you have and or can build, and I keep forgetting where I keep all my goddamn frames. Jimmy, we're gonna need to figure this out. I actually don't know the issue on that. There was an update to OBS. This is why you don't update your broadcasting software two minutes before the stream, because there might be issues that are not yet worked out. And I, I think that might be the case here. I'm not 100%. Vibe Zerg Guide has you max out on Roach and Lings by the 8-ish minute mark. Huh, that's something like my guy. With the build order. And then he literally 8-clicks the minimap and continues macroing. He doesn't even look at his units after he makes them. Let's go to your camera. Your brood has found something to chew on. No, don't listen to her. Don't believe her lies. Field depleted. Yeah. 
Well, I've said how many times. I was the last Zerg player we had. I said I removed their Zergling and well, I removed their mainling privileges. I think I'm gonna have to remove your Zergling privileges. Nidus privileges. Wait, wait, wait. We need a Nidus privileges. Denied. Zergling privileges. Denied. Uh, canceling anything ever privileges. Denied. Spire privileges. Denied. Wings and lists in general? Denied. Anything not roaches? Denied. So, that is, uh, essential. Roaches and queens, and I don't mind the corruptors. That's the only way you didn't die to everything. But. Nothing left in that. Micro wing? Denied. Mind out of mineral. You blocked your own base. Now the beautiful thing about this is like, you were almost in a scenario where you could have won. Denied. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow, this is why I like just picking out random replays. You never know. Now we find what truly happens using the English language. Denied. Or any language. Denied. Like, you had, he handed you every opportunity to win this game and y all you had to do was walk through that door but you're like hey wait a second let me go check the nidus for any victories there will be no victories in your nidus or of your nidus or from your nidus or with your nidus in fact your nidus in general should never exist and i think hiding your own units from yourself with your idle drones and your idle brain is, is quite a summary here. Maybe take 10 minutes and figure out these eight minute, like like my videos, what, 12 minutes? Vibe has a bunch. Um, none of this even looked like, some of these looked like an impression of someone who like watched too many streams and doesn't play enough. Uh, or like eventually we got to where we're supposed to go. But here we got denied. If this is your late game strat, then you have no strategy. Oh, and that's just the end of it. That's how it ends. All right. C plus. Because anyone who plays more than 10 games a season in gold will probably eventually get plat. They aren't all that bad, trust me. I don't trust you. Your trust? Denied. I don't like, I could have believed silver, believed silver, I might have believed plat, but it was particularly bad. But gold seems right on the money, like the perfect confluence of some basic, like the creep spread was okay. Um, but also forgetting massive things like self-respect. So that was, that was something. Uh, there's this from Lucas. You're, are, are you flat? Or fun fact, drop.sc is for lazy people because you know where, you know what drop.sc truly is? Wow, sc2replaystats.com. Congratulations. All right. Of course, the ones individually sent in. Are we looking? I guess we'll look at the whole account. All right, fair. Wait, no, that's not the account. That's just... How, just give me a link to your account specifically. Anyways, wait, is that a co-op replay? <clears throat> um, you seeing anything? You seeing anything here? You seeing... You, you... 
You were supply blocked for three minutes and 41 seconds. And I assume you're not supply blocked because you max out and there's a massive fight where you run into siege tanks. If we just go up to the 12... Since you weren't supply blocked an, after the 12 minute mark, because you lost all your units, you were supply blocked for nearly four minutes of the first 12. Essentially building units... Denied. Yeah, TBT actually statistically is your worst matchup here. Wow, that is a... Uh... Yep, silver. So you need to build build probes and pylons, a.k.a. Um, SCVs and supply depots, oh, but it's the same problem. Surface. Drones and Overlord. <sighs> Thank you, uh, uh, Scythe Stain. I can't, like, this is one of those. We actually haven't had that many of these today. But this one, and Terran, here's the thing. Terran gets hurt the most by supply block. More than any other race. The races are not all the same, believe it or not. Because Terran units, you can't just have like 30 larvae ready to go. You can't have uh, a half a dozen or more warpins ready to go. No. As Terran, when you get on supply block, congratulations, you get to start building a unit. So it's twice as bad as many of... Well, not twice as bad, but it's it's worse. It's, it's at least 50% worse than uh, Zerg and probably close to that for Protoss, but so, and you might be like, well, my opponent is also Terran. Well, he didn't get supply blocked for literally a third of the fucking game. And I'm, I'm looking forward to how much supply is it at. Do we have the classic 23 out of 23 starter? I don't think so. I think this, we're looking at a 54, maybe a 62. Those are big ones, because that point, you like, you have two Reapers to micro. There's so much to do. Let's find out. Are you literally a Bronze League hero? Wait, have you been on Bronze League heroes? And if you have, you haven't watched any others where I say every single time the staple of Bronze League heroes is building an engineering bay before the two minute mark? Okay, so this engineering bay it's in your base, not his base, and you're not doing a proxy planetary fortress. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, so, you might be like, well, I'm scared of air units. If he proxied a starport in your mineral line, like right next to your engineering bay, the earliest, like if he rushed it out, like the most optimum perfect build, and he was building a starport right the fuck here, The earliest you would need an engineering bait is like the three minute mark. Like, so you are a full 90 seconds from if somehow past your useless hard wall before units exist, uh, supply depots and SCV sauntered into your base, built the entirety of a starport, and put it right here, your engineering bait would still be a minute and a half early. Like, the earliest you need to build it is the three-minute mark. That's, like, literally, a star like, right there. Stargator, Starport. Right here, all this tells me is you have no idea what you're doing, you never plan ahead, and you're very scared of other players. All right, we got to build a wall, okay? They are not coming. We, our, our SCVs are mining our minerals and nobody else, okay? And then my dad told me all about when, when he lost a dozen SCVs to Banshees and... and I don't want that to... And there was a command center, and it flew into my base, and it landed right down, and... and 
What about a plus one combat shield rush? Yeah, what if this is for upgrades? Stop it. Don't. Don't do that. That is not as bad. Not as bad as just building random ass turrets like this is literally Bronze League Heroes. But don't do marine rushes in Terran versus Terran. I would say it all, but especially Terran versus Terran, because there's this unit you might have heard of. Uh, it's called the Siege Tank. Okay. Um, and it exists. So, no matter how many Marines you want to rush up the goddamn ramp, a couple Siege Tanks are going to ruin your whole day. And you might be like, well, what if I rush it? Well, there's no scenario where you're going to have plus one before they can have a tank. This guy, okay. Remember, this is the Silver League. So, the engineering bay isn't the end of the world. The fact you got an orbital command is already a plus. I just want to, like, it is entirely useless. The fact it exists is not going to affect the whole game, but the mindset of someone who builds an engineering bay of the, at this time affects the whole game. That's the point. It's a slippery slope. Been like you got a tech lab on what if he built one reaper in fact he is right now a reaper comes out at the two minute mark if you build a tech lab first it's like well i'm going for stim what are you what are you playing fucking league of legends you're gonna get plus one in stim for five marines because that did you know stim got a buff it only takes 100 seconds to finish now it used to take 121 that means if you're on time with all your marines you will only have five of them by the time Stim finishes, maximum. So five top tier Marines get signed a fucking TSM, go straight down the mid lane and take the championship. That's what we're looking for, right? I assume. Upgraded. SCV ready. SCV ready. Oh, a Marauder. Ooh, it's on. Okay. Two Marauders. Got him. That Reaper got wrecked. And plus one for all three of these Marauders. And double upgrades. And another NG Bay. You have more engineering bays than unit producing structures. Let's have a Looks like that research is done. This is some advanced meta. Just... I don't, I, like, by the way, um, there is no hope here. Uh, this is, there is no impression of, like, this feels like somebody was playing co-op or some shit. And, uh, just tried to translate that into, and still a little better than whatever the other guy's doing. But, like, it feels like this is a mediocre co-op build somehow trying to make it into multiplayer. That's what I assume, because everything else, like... That's the only place this could have come from. League is just a different game, mates. Yeah, why does Winter hate League? That's a good question. League is just a different game. I enjoy it for different reasons than SC2. Yeah, like SC2 is a game, like it's a cerebral game. You challenge yourself in 1v1. Um, it pits you in real-time strategy up against an opponent. Whereas League of Legends is very good uh, for masochists who want to demonstrate why team games are, are terrible and, and great for both lowering, raising, and then lowering your self-esteem again, and then constantly being frustrated over and over having to work with people who you wouldn't even work with if someone paid you to, uh, and then spending at least 15 to 20 minutes each time only to be frustrated, uh, and then doing it all again. Um, there are different reasons to enjoy it. So. Everybody has their own interests. Our command centers research complete. Upgrade complete. Okay. Wait a second. So we're building an armory. I can't, like, if I didn't see all those other replays. Um. If I didn't see all those other replays on your account, I, I think this was a troll replay sent in. Because I'm like, are we doing Marauder Mana Battle here? Uh. Are you the type of person who's like, Winter, what do I do if they rush battlecruisers at the 9 minute mark? And I only have 12 marauders with 2-2. Two -two. Oh, 
then to that I say, uh, pray. And there we go. Bam. There it is. The 54 block. Nicely done. We're going to go headlong straight into it. Like, we're actually looking good. The thing is, building more shit than your opponent is nine-tenths of the way to getting promoted up until probably about plat. Minimum. Because right now, look, 54 to 41 supply. What has he got on the other side? He's got, of course, this would be the place to expand. He's got two tanks, which are dangerous. Um, he's got turrets like this is Brood War, and he's playing against Zerg. Uh, or shuttle drops or something. I don't know. Um, but he's at 41 supply. If we just don't get supply blocked here, then at some point... You can actually kill the tanks. You'll lose almost everyone. Alright, I'm not sure if we're ever going to discover... So, here's what I want you to do. Um, besides crab raving. We've already crab raved today. Everybody calm down. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, for every... We're going to just deep breath because we're going to hold our breath. I'm going to tell you until when. So what we're going to do is you're going to hold your breath until you are unsupply blocked. And why? Why would you do that? Because if you feel like out of the game you're struggling, it is no surprise that you are struggling in the game. And if you're like, well, I can't hold my breath for 30 seconds, Winter, one, you better get real good at getting unsupply blocked, and two, you should probably get that checked out. So, deep breaths, and then we'll just go to 54. Add on. Supply already? Ready to roll out. SCP ready. Gotta build more supply depots. Kaboom, baby! Upgrade complete. Wait, we're back. You see my point? That was a full minute. Despite your dumpster fire of a bill. Be despite the fact that you have obviously a severe aversion or possibly a mental condition that uh, makes you unable to build air units. Despite um, getting supply blocked for a significant percentage of the game. Because you're building a lot of production facilities, bases, and upgrades, you're still ahead on supply. You're ahead on upgrades by a huge margin. Which is why I feel kind of convinced now that you're a co-op hero who plays multiplayer on the side. Because it honestly feels like some sort of like Rainer build or something, but you forgot you can't build medics. It's medivacs. They fly. Out of supply. But we haven't made it there yet. Add-on complete. Look at the supply. And now the beauty of Silver League is we're still not 100% sure. Neither player has attacked each other. There was that one Reaper and then nobody has done anything. Are you ready for the counter scan meta? Okay. Two questions, chat. First, who scans first? And second, how many counter scans are there? Because everybody knows that everybody forgets about scan until they get scanned themselves. But will it be our hero here? 
Or will it be the other guy? We're gonna find out. Like, look at the support. Like, you're, nothing is happening. You still don't have a starport. You need to build a starport. At all. Ever. Like, this is not even remotely close to any sort of build order. But you're building more shit than him. So, like, no literally nothing has happened. And you're up by 70 supply. Oh, go Barracks. Oh, is that a Liberator? Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Air units? I completely forgot about those. Now the question. Now we see how much of a Bronze League hero he is. Is his first response to build multiple starports or multiple turrets? And if it's only turrets, there is no hope. If it's turrets and then starports, there's a little bit of hope. If it's starports, maybe there's a dream. If it's nothing... Then, I don't know. I didn't have a plan for that. Uh-oh. There are two Liberators. I guess we gotta go fucking base train. There's no other options. It's impossible to kill two Liberators. Oh, counter scan. Where's the counter scan? Boom. Yeah, nothing there. Oh, another one. Vendaya scan. Bunch of tanks. Is it gonna stop us? Why would it stop us? Yeah, you're in a war. Armed and ready. Not without more supplies. And now come the Upgrade turrets. Complete. Upgrade complete. The TPM will be Might I met you're literally sitting down his ramp right now, my friend. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, the pact has been sealed! Blood for the blood god! Some of us won't make it, but oh, the Terran Dominion will be service. victorious! Hi. Jesus Christ! Oh my god! Every 10 supply that gets obliterated here is one league of why you're not a higher league. Let me, let me just count it down here, alright? We've dispelled with the entire idea he could have any other bases. He does have another base. Only one. He could have seven. He has enough money. He could have seven other bases on the fucking map. But, uh, there aren't that many leagues. That's a good point. 20,000 leagues under the Masters. And, and all right, there goes... The fact you did this at all, you stimmed twice, by the way. Extra drugs. There goes Masters. There's Diamond. Here goes Platinum. We're not even going to be Golden Pony Boy. And now we end with the Silver League. Jesus Christ. I like, I like how you saw it multiple times. You saw it. You're like, oh, he has tanks up there. And I'm not like... I truly wonder, what happens in someone's brain? Assuming they have one. Like... Why? Why? I... What? Kaboom, he does He can't build a lot. About to get heavy. This better be good. <coughs> well, if only we had a couple more wrecks. Nope, can't build there. And maybe that would solve the problem. Did you know that? Did you see the units? Did you see the SC? Okay. Add-ons, good to go. It's go. 
Let's look at the incomes. Our command center's been upgraded. <laughs> Think about how many Marines per, per minute we can send to our death at that much income. That's 80 Marines a minute. Oh my god. Alright, a Liberator, the same two tanks, and a battle cruiser. Now here's the question. Is there any amount of tanks at the top of that ramp that are ever going to keep him from running up it again? I truly wonder. Like, like four tanks? Would that be too much? Eight tanks? Is there any number that will stop this madness? That mineral cluster's mined out. Because more shit does counter less shit. And there are very few exceptions that aren't... I mean, if... The threshold for exceptions to that rule is higher than the threshold for what could be considered a war crime. Um, Depleted that mineral cluster. Good this one. isn't We're so much a war supplies. crime, it's just a basic crime against no. humanity. But, uh, go, go, go. good old fashioned. Yeah. Like, cause this makes me feel like Maybe, maybe we, maybe the education system failed somewhere. In fact, I, I... Add on complete. I mean, we got hit by a siege tank. There are no other options. He has a tank. We must attack. They, I mean... Okay, so the answer is... Six, seven, eight tanks. That's not enough. The upgrades are great. The upgrades are saving the day. Wasn't enough to stop him. Like having three, three upgrades will get you real far. Point your guns up, little Marines. Take down that massive battle cruiser. Depleted that mineral cluster. So, I, I, I always compare. Uh, so this is essentially. This, this is StarCraft. Uh, especially below Masters, but in general. This is truly what it should be. Micro. You got micro, and you got macro. Okay, that is the key. Because if they think they have enough micro to beat your macro, they're like, "Oh shit, this is the Titanic," and there's even more iceberg where that came from, and they should run headlong into your macro. And here. I don't know. I, I don't know what this has has to do with that. Um, that's not directly related to this game, but just just in, just to get some. Macro is the ocean. Macro is the bottom part of the iceberg. The the larger part. Uh, but I don't know how this applies to this situation. Actually, um, I thought about. It, I'm like, not sure what I'm trying to convey here. Uh, I don't under, like, you'll get to gold by just building a bunch of units. If you max out, like, you might be like, when do I need to max out? And the answer to get to gold is ever. If you think you're maxing out or your opponent's maxing out in the majority of the games and you're below the gold league, you're not correct. Um, people will just be like, well, I guess I hit 128 supply and that'll that'll do it. So it's a B. That is not considering B for blood and broken bones. And, not, and for... I don't know. I, 
You made a lot of Marines. Good job. Uh, good job on that. He forgot medevacs? I'm not sure if he forgot them so much as he has, like, a religious objection to them. He also apparently has a religious objection to his marine surviving more than a minute. What do I do? Uh, stop playing co-op and multiplayer. Build banshees? Oh, Jesus Christ. Never mind. All right. It's a B-. minus. All right. You, what you got away from that was build banshees? You, from all that, all of that, you're like, I don't know. Should I build banshees? Will banshees be the unit? Oh, my God. Did you not hear the part about the medics that can fly? Medics, like Rainer medics, but they fly? B- is a passing grade. Honestly, like I said, maxing out, getting upgrades, ever expanding to more than two bases. Uh, these are all going to get you to gold. It might be a struggle. There will definitely be pain and suffering on the way, but you play enough games, you're going to get to gold doing that. And don't get supply block for a minute. You know what? I thought the supply block would be the biggest issue. It was. It didn't even crack the top five there. The top five were don't run up a ramp into siege tanks, build medevacs, don't run up a ramp into more siege tanks, don't do drugs, kids, and uh, don't run up a ramp into siege tanks. Like, uh, those are the top five. You might be like, but it worked. Yeah, it did. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> All right. Our last one for now, because we've been at this for so long. We've got Najex Lameo. Who is a gold zerg? Oh, jeez. Don't run up a ramp in the siege. <laughs> Your worst matchup is zerg versus zerg. So. Let's take a look. Let's. Yeah, by far. It's not even close on this. It just seems like there's going to be a basic breakdown. All right, let's look at this one. Star Godly. 13 minutes. Looks like you have a bunch of units, and then you don't. And then you lose the game. We'll see how that goes. What do we have here? Nothing stands out. So we're just going to have to jump in and see. So Zerg versus Zerg, a lot of players feel like you can't get past the Ling Bane phase. And for every Zerg matchup, especially in High Bronze and Low Plat, the answer is build more Queens. Even Zerg versus Zerg. It's not so much just, like, have the queens out on the map attacking things, like your Rainer or something, but queens allow you to stabilize. The more queens you have, the better they get. Because they heal each other, take up more surface area, stuff like that, of course. Okay. Looks like he did an early pull on the other side. So Zerg versus Zerg, there's no anti-air early. You can send your Overlord straight at him. If you send your Overlord, well, it looks like you're actually going to the right spot. Never mind. A little bit off center. But you want an Overlord right here. And then maybe over here or over here a little bit further back. In case they do have a Queen. What you don't want to do is make it so he can run a bunch of Zerglings out of his base. And then you don't know he has a bunch of Zerglings out of his base. Because that would be bad. Alright, so the fact that his expansion isn't done and yours is. Oh no. Oh no, we're microing your queen. This is not what I meant. Okay.
What should I do against Mass Queen? You should reconsider your na naming yourself Poop Face McGee 77 if you expect to get an answer to anything in life. But with that in mind, dream on. Okay, so when you don't put your Overlord at the smack dab in the middle of everything, you know what's going to happen is you might build a bunch of Zerglings and you won't see it. Now, I know looking at the minimap is hard, but that's kind of the point. He ran by the edge of this. You didn't notice. If you put it right there, you see all the Zerglings. If you put them in these random locations, you let, let's, let's look at your vision again. Let's take a look again. Successful. Okay, there's a few Zerglings there. Forces under attack. There's a few more Zerglings, but guess how many? There were more than that! There actually aren't that many Zerglings. Are we waiting on it or something? Does he make more? That's not as many Zerglings as I originally thought. No, that's not as many. That's not that many Zerglings. No, no, no. Okay. So when I say build more queens, they don't just sit here like lovingly gazing at the hatchery they come down the ramp so that way not all your drones die that is what i meant uh i i just didn't think i had to make that clear um but i i i meant they fight they don't give you an aesthetic bonus um because Well, now you have a bunch of Zerglings, and now he is doing the thing of like, wow, how crazy! This guy built a bunch of Zerglings! What a cheeser! Even though he's the one who prompted you to make so many Zerglings. So, now we're on this side. Oh, please don't... Okay. And now all the Zerglings are dead. Now, okay, I know this is gonna sound absolutely crazy. But because you built all those Zerglings, because he built all those Zerglings... Okay, stick with stick with me. Because of that, now he built a bunch of Zerglings. So, he's going to have a lot of Zerglings now. We we're here just to put that jog... Like, remember, you built a lot, but then he did again. Because you built so many Zerglings. I know, that happened seconds ago. It's way out of mind. But, let's just, just try. Just think about it. Because if you build a bunch of drones right now, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose a bunch of drones. You built drones. You built drones. You built drones. They're going to die. Because you have the attention span of a poorly treated goldfish. Who I think could probably do better in the gold league. Now we have roaches. But that wasn't the first choice. The first choice was drones. You you thought about it for a little bit. And then bam. Jimmy. To the point. On the bright side, I don't know if you just noticed, the Zerglings are coming out, but on the bright side, he didn't just send all his lings out. He did now. Oh, look. He built a bunch of... Why did he build so many Zerglings? What a cheeser. If only we could have seen them from for more than a little bit. I mean, you did see it on the mini-map, but... Oh, my God. Don't fight with the drones if you're going to lose. Run away. Run away. But now you built a bunch of roaches, which is going to catch him by total surprise. He'll never expect that. Continuing with the trend. All right. So despite your best efforts, you are now winning this game. Congratulations. Um... You've really stepped it up. So now now here's the thing, though. we got to think about it this way. Now he's going to build units. I know. I know. It sounds crazy. So he built a bunch of Zerglings. Because he doesn't have roaches. Or does he? He just Okay, he just didn't build any. Anyways. Not important. But. So now he's building units. You built units. 
and now he's building units. I, I want you to follow along, all right? Because it's it's hard to it's hard to follow, but when you build units and attack him, he will sometimes build units. All right, we got it. I know last time it didn't sink in. That much is obvious. But now he's going to build the units. Your field exhausted. Okay. So what should we do? Expand to a, a new base and build drones? Can we get can we get dr no creep tumors? Okay. Alright. Oh yeah, lair. Okay. Alright, and a bunch of drones. So so okay. Alright. I wanna I wanna make this clear. So this is why sometimes it feels like a coin flip. And now it's crazy. He can also build Zerg units, which are pretty fast. So so instead of when you build units and attack him, being surprised when, when he builds units, what I want you to assume is every time you build units, he also built units. I know, like, it is a turn-based game. That's what we're playing right now. But you can both build units on your turn. You don't have to trade off. He might not know that. It doesn't seem like he knows that. You don't know that. But, like, that's a, I'm letting you in on a secret. You can just keep building units. Hive cluster under direct assault. Like, about 70% of this would have been solved if you just had the Overlord in the right spot. But... Yeah, like, unfortunately, everybody's gone back and forth. We're getting vertigo here. It doesn't seem like there's any intention. I don't even know if the Rotorn was 100% conscious. Because there's no upgrades, no nothing. Like, to me, to me, this seems like the time. Uh, I predict two Evo Chambers in the main base in the next five seconds. Because you're like, oh, I have all these minerals. I don't know what to do with them. Mineral cluster expended. Hydrogen. Uh, uh, okay, well, we're getting there. Rump, oh, God. It's worse than I thought. That would be the Platinum League reflex. Is finally, once everybody calms down, it's like, oh, yeah, upgrades. But we're only 10 minutes in. I probably don't need them. But the fact that that wasn't your 1,300 minerals in the bank... Four bases instinct is pretty rough. Oh, jeez. Like, at least the other guy got upgrades for units that he doesn't have. You don't even have that. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. To say that is late would be like saying you should release a casual MOBA several years after other MOBAs already have total popularity. Which would be a silly move, and nobody should, should try doing that. It probably won't work out. But, th that's how late this is. Um, and this probably won't work out. Or another mediocre Battle Royale game after their already way better Battle Royale games while bastardizing one of their own franchises. And the, there's a reason they call them Daybreak Games. Ah! Swarm forces under attack. Like, you have no upgrades. You, We've been, like, panicking... In multiple ways, now we're playing the bingo game of like, I wonder what we'll get next. Eventually, you'll remember some of your tech. Why, why now for Zergling speed? Also, wait, what? You didn't have Zergling speed this whole time? If you got this far without Zergling speed, now is not the time for Zergling. What happened here? Did you just walk into his army without realizing that was happening? Or was there an active a oh. Yeah. Okay, so he has way more shit. And uh, better upgrades. Swarm has evolved. 
Um, you you built the one unit that can overcome this is lurkers. I will give you that. You need to build upgrades ever, like fucking ever. It's it it's. I don't know if it's worse if you get the Evo Chambers. Like, you built the Evo Chambers over here. And you know what's so beautiful and terrible simultaneously about this? Is you remembered eventually, far too late, minutes late, as a total afterthought to get the Evo Chambers. But now the problem is, you built the Evo Chambers so far away from your hatchery as some sort of mental distancing here, you keep going back to your main and you don't see Evo Chambers, and in your lizard brain, to you, that means they don't exist! At no point are you accidentally scrolling over your Evo Chambers, remembering upgrades are actually kind of good. You put them somehow, subconsciously, so fucking far away from your base, you, you're not even accidentally getting upgrades. Which is is a beautiful calculation you've made here. I like wh why are they here in the first place? I don't. It's like well, I, zoning regulations, you know. Like, I, okay, if I put my Evo chambers over here, that would be the platinum zone. Okay, this is the gold zone, and the silver zone is I don't know somewhere, um, in, in the ball pit. That, that, don't tell me that's not true. Everyone. Even occasionally me, but even, especially through Diamond, Zergs, Protoss, and Terran. How often do you forget that upgrades exist until you happen to notice your two engineering bays, or your two forges, or your two Evo chambers? Oh yeah! Like, I don't... And then it's like, oh, I guess I should get two too. But in this case, it's anything, but... Oh, there they are. Yeah, time for 1-1. One, one. You could have literally... Our Silver League Terran player, since this is a whole marathon. Our Silver League Terran player. Last game, Silver. Had 3-3 three, three done by this time of the game. What he did with it is unspeakable, and I won't repeat it. But he had 3-3 three, three done. You just started 1-1. One, one. What? Why did you only... What? Why was this what ended the game? It's like, well, I only brought half my units and it wasn't enough. Okay. Besides the fact that home he has like 30 hydras, like 12 links come in. So... I need you to... My Zerg build. You need to learn, one, how to wall off with two Evo Chambers and a Roach Horn. And you need to figure out how to max out with a whole metric fuck ton of roaches. With speed and plus one. By the... We'll say nine minute mark. That's very, very on the outside, but... Because... For, as you can see here, neither of these players can be relied upon to have object permanence. Object permanence is when, even though something is not, like, in front of your face, you can remember it exists. Like, you remember, like, that's part of being a human being, which we're not going to give credit to these players. But, since both these players, it, it is very obvious, even though they saw a bunch of Zerglings, or a bunch of units, as soon as you move the camera away, or Evo Chambers, you move the camera away, it's like, Drones. I see drones. Let's make drones. Uh, so let's remove the the need to remember what your opponent is doing. Um, and let's remember what we need to do. Um, yeah, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. But everybody after this replay knows you're a bitch. So two Evo Chambers and a Roach one, just like a Protoss, three buildings, Jam a queen in there. Bam. There you go. Uh, in that way, it's going to be very... Give back! Give back! No! Uh, it's going to be very hard to ignore getting upgrades and getting roaches and doing all that. Let's try that. 
No more making Zerglings in ZvZ. Queens, Roaches, maybe then Hydras. That's it. I'd be like, what about Ling, Ling Bane? Ignore it. Ignore it. No more Ling Bane. So, anything Ling related is probably a bad idea, let's be honest. <clears throat> so that was Gold League. Based on that, I know your other matchups are better. I'm not sure how, but maybe it's just ZVZ. Sometimes mere matchups throw people off, but that's like a, that's a B minus. Because uh, it seemed like you had the right instincts of when to expand and spend your money, but you forgot, like, it's like you drove away from the gas station missing one of your tires without refueling the tank and also half of your children. Of which you had three, so puzzle that one out. Um, cause, cause you know where you want to go, but you keep for, you keep screwing yourself over on how to get there. Um, let's let's summarize. Let's let's go through it all. Uh, we had a whole lot of Protoss, a little bit of Terran and Zerg, but the Terran and Zerg were very very uh, direct examples, I guess. Some great examples of hitting the play button. Some great examples of how that isn't everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Angry Coach Marathon. Of course, before we finish summarizing, uh, I'll take a few questions from the live Twitch chat. The benefit for people tuning, turning in, tuning, tuning in at Vampire Hours. But uh, like and subscribe and ring the bells and all that. And make sure to uh, comment like, but I'm a gold player and I'm very good about getting upgrades. Like now you have to build units. All right, one step at a time. Um, but for Protosses, we once again see either the issue is forgetting your entire game plan and not getting your tech, uh, or just being so, or distracting yourself from it. Like with a Warp Prism Harass, that won't do anything, or forgetting that you need to defend your third, stuff like that. Um... Yeah, we're going to... Well, we'll see. It looks like a lot of people are getting banned. Believe it or not, when I'm like, we're going to answer some questions. People did not ask good questions. Who would have thought on Twitch chat? I'm sure YouTube comments are always better. Um, because they have like a very rigorous process for vetting people who make YouTube comments. So that makes you special. Um, who's the third most likely to win Super Tournament? You guys are fucking useless. I'm going to stick to myself. No questions. Your privilege revoked. That was one of the better ones, by the way. That was a good question. Just not a good question, though. Um, but for Protoss, your first tech is important. Your second tech is even more important. But just getting to your first tech without screwing up a wall or getting distracted by a Reaper uh, or microing your Oracle to be able to get four whole drone kills before dying to a queen, things like that. Getting all that set up, getting 50... For all three races... 50 workers by 8 minutes, and ideally a third base for Zerg by 4 minutes, for Terran and Protoss by 6 minutes, at least starting to try to take it. Like, Terrans, you can build it on the high ground. Protoss, you don't have to be able to defend it this second, but you want to be able to defend it in a minute. That's why you start it so early. Um, but I think Protoss has the biggest issue with just forgetting one big part for too long. It doesn't seem like a big deal not to have Archons for 3 minutes, but it is. Uh, or a third base for three minutes. Because Protoss units are so powerful, you're just going to run over everything until you don't. For Terrans, it's a combination, to be honest. Like, a lot of Terran players feel like they're doing well. They're probably spending their money pretty well without realizing they're getting supply blocked and queuing up units, which isn't actually spending your money. It's just going into debt. Um, or, or not building quite enough workers so feeling like I'm doing a good job honestly unspent resources and resource management is a big issue for Terrans even if you are spending your money uh, and then for Zergs it is one just basic unit composition Lings are dangerous Lisks almost as much honestly Banelings Zerglings Hydralisks Ultralisks Mutalisks more like Risks any of those things Hydras are probably the least uh, the least dangerous, but they should be combined usually, especially in the high bronze, low plat leagues, with roaches, not with zerglings and banelings, as we've seen multiple times 
are more likely to just die before anything else happens, as opposed to being a helpful part of the unit composition. So, beware of those. Uh, and then, wait, did I? I already went through Terran. Zerg players do have a tendency, um, because you only have to build one of each tech building in order to uh, build that unit, it's easy to get distracted from your later game goal. Because you're like, well, I got my tech. We're doing this now. Uh, and forgetting, oh, I need an infestation pit for a hive or a spire for broodlords. Um, and then it's too late. And then they have too much stuff. So the summary is, you got to hit the play button. you got to keep doing it. SC2 replay stats auto downloader. Spend three seconds figuring out, or maybe for you three minutes. I don't know. Some sometimes I question how you manage to log in with your smart refrigerator, but um, on a controller that wasn't on Bluetooth. Puzzle, puzzle that. Uh, but figure that out if you truly care uh, about improving. I think it's okay to off race, but I don't think playing random is the most efficient way. Um, and check out, and if you get too frustrated, if you get too rustled up, well, check out Star Chess. <laughs> if, if you don't want to play the real-time strategy game, Star Chess is a lot of fun. So uh, check it out. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, or at least were entertained. <laughs>